All right, all right, all right. Happy Friday to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is 12 Gage. And if you've never been to my channel, once again, welcome. If you've been here before, I hope that you enjoy what you see here, what you hear here, and the analytical portion that I break down and I give the information to try to be mindful of the victims that are discussed the situation that we encounter throughout this true crime world. Please try to understand that a lot of this is since the information is very, very graphic at times. So it's not meant to hurt, harm, or degrade anybody's position. Tonight, I have a very special guest coming on. He's been on many panels. He has extensive knowledge of a certain case and i'm sure many more but um he's going to come up and we're going to discuss the idaho four but before we do that we're going to talk about a couple cases and then we'll dive right into the idaho four so without further ado sergeant friday welcome 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 am i here i'm here oh my god i'm alive Yes, you are. Welcome, sir. People have been missing me on other streams around the uh, YouTube community. <laughs> well, welcome. Well, so you want to tell me. us a little bit about yourself, Sergeant, just in case people don't know who you are? Um, what brings you to the TrueCom community? How long you've been here? Just that and the other. What cases you particularly like to sure. talk about? Things like that. I like difficult problems, true crime. And for a long time, I was politics for many years. I did politics. I did a stream in politics for several years. And got out of that in 2020 and then uh, studied sciences and different things when it comes to astrology and a lot of the stuff Musk is doing. But then come across uh, this Idaho 4, which was the first case I'd come across and never really paid any attention to. I'm highly aware of you know, the cases that have been going on around the country over for years and years and years. As a matter of fact, there's where I live, there's a, a famous serial killer I won't mention. But um, so it's it's always been a curiosity to me. Um, okay. and the reason it's been a curiosity, but I and I didn't pay much attention to it, in all fairness, is much of the lifestyles abuses that a lot of serial killers have were part of my upbringing. Okay. And uh, and I, I just always laugh and think, you know, no matter how bad it was for me as a kid. It never dawned on me that I should go harm others. So that kind of probably kept me away from true crime because I just can't wrap my head around innocent people being victims of somebody that was abused or whatever happened to you as a kid. I, I just find it a deplorable excuse, you know? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Well, um, welcome. And, and, yeah, and I enjoy talking to people too, obviously. So. Yes. Well, um, currently we don't have anybody in the chat, so it's just you and I for now. So we'll um, we'll start off by discussing a couple cases, and then we'll dive into the Idaho Four. If you're okay with that, yeah, oh yeah, that's fine. Okay, can I can I give you a, just a tip? Sure. the The title is where you're going to make all your hits. Okay. Okay, and yours says discussion and breakdown, missing Mizzou update. But you you could have made a more interesting title, and, okay. and people people say, well, that's clickbait. No, it's not clickbait. People want to know what what's in in a stream, and the more interesting, sometimes the more fun, or the more curiosity you can put into the title, the better off you're going to be. Right. You could have put in here I, special guest, right? That would have people even if they don't like me, right? People would have came in to see who you were talking to. Exactly. You, you, let me well, let me change that. You don't have to, but I think in going forward, if you can change it, fine. But I just want to help you going forward because that's really, you do want to get a viewership. You're, and I've listened to talk with you now for a couple of times over two days, and you're, you're a very intelligent and patient man. And you could do nothing but help, you know? Yes, sir. I appreciate that. 
like I said, I'm, I'm fairly new on all this, so any help I can get, I'm, I'm humble enough to accept it. Well, the first case that I'd like to discuss is um, if you if people haven't heard about it, um, day six in the search for the college student out of Nashville. Um, let me go ahead and play the video and give some information, some background on it. Can you see that pretty good on the screen? Oh, yeah. Okay. The path to business success is often unpredictable. Managing your bank account doesn't First, we got to get past the commercial. Find your flow with powerfully smooth banking that Always keeps you right. focused on bringing your yeah. vision to life. Yeah, exactly. Wherever your company goes, Mercury is there. With We all want him back. It's the longest we've ever gone without talking to him. And I'm sorry. Riley, we're still here, Bubba. We're coming for you. Just help us find you. Our top story tonight as we continue to cover this missing young man, another day in the search for Riley Strain has come and gone. And now with thunderstorms out there in Nashville, no sign of this missing college student tonight. He has not been seen in nearly a week after a night out on Broadway last Friday. Today, crews were back along the Cumberland River looking for any sign of the missing University of Missouri student. Now we're learning new details about his disappearance as well as how Metro police crews are trying to track his last location. Our Sharon Dankwa joins us now to break down what we know here tonight, Sharon. Marius Tracy, I got a lot of questions from people about tracking Riley's phone and what's being done to get a hold of its location. These are the surveillance videos we've seen so far. You see 22 year old Riley Strain stumbling through the streets of Nashville. Police say Riley was kicked out of Luke's bar on Broadway Friday night while on a Mizzou fraternity trip. He told friends he was heading back to their hotel. But video shows him walking up Third Avenue North, turning onto Church Street and Gay Street, then disappearing after this last Life 360 ping near James Robertson Parkway. The last contact with the friends was after he left Luke Bryan's. I believe that one of them had tried to reach out to him. I don't remember if it was by phone or by text. I think he said that he heard, like it sounded like he was outside. He could hear a lot of loud, uh, a lot of loud noise outside. Uh, but he couldn't give any more information, and then he wasn't able to actually speak to him. Police have spent days scouring the area for any clues, but Metro Cold Case Sergeant Robert Nelson says they're also digging through Riley's call logs, text messages, and any location ping that could have gotten lost. Some of the data we're still waiting on. There's a legal process when you're getting some of this information, and so sometimes it's multiple steps, and a lot of it depends on the company that you're trying to get that information, whether it's social media or a cell phone company. They're also looking for information on the Apple Watch Riley was wearing. I asked a phone location specialist what else could come from these devices. He says in some of these cases, the companies who created the phone or watch worn can track down more precise locations of them before they lost power. But right now, we have requested some of that information. We've done emergency pings, and we're just trying to get that information from them. Sergeant Nelson says right now they're just hoping to get any new information from Riley's phone or watch as soon as possible. Now, right now, police say Riley's last known location is somewhere in between the Woodland Street Bridge and the James Robertson Parkway Bridge. Marius Tracy. Sharon Danqua tonight. Thank you. Tonight, we're also learning new details about why Riley left Luke's 32 Bridge. His stepfather says he was asked to leave that bar because bartenders suspected he had been overserved. Riley's stepfather says Riley went up to the bar to pay his tab, but he didn't have a tab open. The bartender told him he had to leave because they thought he, again, had been overserved. This week, the Tennessee ABC opened up an investigation into his disappearance because it is illegal to serve alcohol to people who are visibly drunk. Riley's mother says she just wants to see her son again. I think my last, the last text was around 7.45, and I just said, I love you, and he said, I love you too. Riley is set to graduate in a few weeks. A GoFundMe to help his family stay in Nashville throughout the search has raised upwards of $38,000. We'll have more on the search starting at 4 a.m. on WSMB for today. All right, that's so tragic. So tragic. Another, and this is happening. This has happened a lot of times with young college age students, particularly white males. And in some of the cases, 
um, well, in all of the cases I'm aware of, there was there was a body of water involved in the crime, and as much as they were searching bodies of water for the missing person, or the the body of water was extremely close to the nightclub or bar where this person was last seen. So this is a there's a pattern of these crimes, and I believe they're referred to as the smiley case killer, the smile face killer. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. And I hope here in Texas, that's... here in Texas, they've had probably about thirteen um, people that have gone into the water. It's called Lady Bird Lake, off of okay. Rainy Street, and it's the same. It's the same scenario, you know. College kid, he's stumbling around, never seen from again, and end up floating up in the water. Um, I I agree with you on that. It says here that he was spotted by two homeless camps. On a night of disappearance, according to his family and people who are actually searching for him. Did you think it was interesting that one shot um, where yeah, he's against that wall? Doesn't it look like he's trying to throw up or something? Yeah, he definitely looks ill. And I, I, I wonder if he wasn't, you know, but, you know, he's drunk. He's not coming from a bar. So he looks extraordinarily inebriated or drugged up, either either or or both. Yeah, in all times, right? Through, if he was drunk, then it was by his own hand, obviously, right? Of course. And, well, she um, said he was asked to leave by the bartender because he went to pay a tab that didn't exist. But I find that offensive. I I don't know why the bartender wouldn't either call the authorities or or file the secure, made sure the person had a way out of there. I mean. You gave them too much alcohol. Now you're just kicking them out in the street. If they go outside and get hit by a car, that you're, you're liable for that. Of course, of course. You know, I don't know about you. Well, I'd like to welcome Jeff in our chat, Sergeant Friday. You know Jeff H. Um, he's oh, in our chat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I've I've been drunk before in a bar, and I've gotten you know cut off or whatever. Um, but the same thing has happened. Usually they don't follow up. They just say, you got to leave. You know, they, you got to leave. I don't know if you guys have experienced that or not, but. They, they usually... There's been a change in that, though. You're right. That's what it was when you and I were were kids. Yeah. But there's there's kind of been a change in that because bars have been sued for this. Okay. You gave him too much alcohol. You would, they, Apparently, he had too much to drink, and he was at that bar. So his inebriation came from that bar. You're not supposed to oversell somebody alcohol, mm -hmm. right? And if somebody is that far gone, like you saw him walking, you have to ask why Why weren't the authorities called, even the police themselves, when you see somebody that messed up. At that point, in other words, he's endangered himself and others, and, and that happened while inside your establishment. I don't know why they wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have called the police. In all fairness, I don't have a clue either. Jeff says he looks very distraught going along that wall. It could be distraught, or it could be it could be drunk, right? I mean, you could play it. It wouldn't hurt to play it again. That was probably a, a pivotal part of that video. Yeah, let me see if I can. Well, yeah, I mean, and it, and it passed right by, and I I noticed it, but didn't concentrate on it. I just felt bad. You know, I feel bad for the kid. I mean, what's right. the worst thing? You know. 22 years old we all make mistakes but most of us don't end up uh vanishing or 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 passed away as a result of it you know right i made mistakes where i was shot at and survived i mean come on this guy got a drink i gotta restart it because um yeah don't worry man don't worry so while this ad runs let's go ahead and keep talking about this um it also says we all want him back. It's the longest we've ever gone without talking to him. And I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, obviously, that's obviously the dad right there. Yeah. Riley, we're still here, Bubba. We're coming for you. Just help us find him. Well, shit. We'll get there. <laughs> no, I'm, there's, I'm not in a rush. I mean, it, you're fine. But it also says that he was um, he was seen by the homeless. But you know how, how credible is that? So long as we've ever gone without talking to him. Well, I would think that. Uh, and I'm sorry. I I would accept their their Riley, statements that they saw that kid walk through there somewhere near the homeless camp. I wouldn't think that would be unreliable. Oh well, yeah, 
Our top right. story tonight as we continue to cover this missing young man, another day in the search for Riley Strain has come and gone. And now with thunderstorms out there in Nashville, no sign of this missing <laughs> college student tonight. He has not <laughs> been seen in nearly a week after a night out on Broadway last Friday. Today, crews were back along the Cumberland River looking for any sign of the missing University of Missouri student. Now we're learning new details about his disappearance as well as how Metro Police crews are trying to track his last location. Our Sharon Danko joins us now to break down what we know here tonight, Sharon. Marius Tracy, I got a lot of questions from people about tracking Riley's phone and what's being done to get a hold of its location. These are the surveillance videos we've seen so far. You see 22-year-old Riley Strain stumbling through the streets of Nashville. Police say Riley was kicked out of Luke's bar on Broadway Friday night while on a Mizzou fraternity trip. He told friends he was heading back to their hotel. But video shows him walking up 3rd Avenue North, turning onto Church Street and Gay Street, then disappearing after this last Life 360 ping near James Robertson Parkway. The last contact with the friends was after he left Luke Bryan's. I believe that one of them had tried to reach out to him. I don't remember. Can, can you can text. you back up and let's just watch that walking down the building outside, three or four times? The last contact with the Phil, police say Riley was kicked out of Luke's bar on Broadway Friday night. He doesn't look drunk in that image. Trip. He told friends he was heading back to their hotel. But video shows him walking up 3rd Avenue North, turning onto Church Street and Gay Street, then disappearing after this last Life 360 ping. That one right there where he was just walking normal? No, the one that the uh, the original video starts and it shows him walking down a building then bent disappearing over. disappearing after this last Life 360 ping. The very last beginning. Contact text. I think he said that he heard like his police have spent days I think he said that he heard before this. like it sounded like he was outside he could hear a lot of love these are the there. surveillance videos we've there. seen so okay. far you see 22 year old Riley two or three times through the streets watch. of nashville police say riley was videos we've seen so far you see 22 year old riley strain stumbling through the streets of nashville police say riley was i don't know if he was these stumbling. are the surveillance videos we've seen so far you see 22 year old riley strain stumbling through the streets of nashville does it look like he's looking into a phone yeah, see, what I do is I, I block out his upper body and just watch his feet move. A, a person stumbling, obviously, where do you stumble? Not from watching the upper body. They stumble at their feet, right? Right. So I like to, I don't see him stumbling. I see him walking. That's why I said if we could play that a few times just to see if, if it looks like a walk or a stupor. Because my initial impression is I it looked to me like he was drugged or drunk. But... Well, he wrong. looks like he's leaning over and looking into his phone. Right. Like right there, right there. Right there. So far, you see 22-year-old right Riley Strain. See, he looks like he's looking in into his phone. You say Riley was kitchen. Do you think yeah. he was These looking are the at a map? These surveillance videos we've seen so far. You see 22-year-old no. Riley Strain stumbling through the streets of Nashville. Police say Riley was kicked I wonder out if he was having a kind of heated night debate night with somebody for or an animated trip. conversation. Out of Luke's bar on Broadway Friday night while on a Mizzou fraternity trip. He told Frank Strain stumbling through the streets of Nashville. Police to get a hold mm, of its location. Time. These are the surveillance videos we've seen so far. You see 22-year-old Riley Strain stumbling through the streets of Nashville. Police say Riley was kicked out of Luke's bar on Broadway remember, Friday man. night while on a Mizzou fraternity trip. He told friends he was heading back to their hotel and Gay Street, then disappearing after see, the... See, now, in this area is where you see him, the other him places, he's walking Avenue normal. North, turning onto Church Street and he's Gay running. Street, then disappearing after this last Walking. Life 360 ping near James Robertson Parkway. The last contact with the friends was after he left Luke Bryan's. But look how close that ping the is friends to the was water. After he ping near James Robertson Can I say Parkway. The last and Gay yeah. Street, then disappearing after this last. Go ahead. Pause that for a moment. Okay. <clears throat> It would be interesting to see if they got body cam footage of the homeless people because this is not the first kid of this description that wandered off in a bad part of town where there were homeless people. There's a few of them like this, too. That's another consistency with the smiley face killer. Okay. Okay. Their last no okay. So when you that's why when you ask me, do I you know do I believe the homeless people? I do. Because there was another one where a, a young kid this age was seen by homeless people. Okay. And that person went missing by a body of water. 
So this is at least number two, if not more, where there's the body of water and the homeless. Well, I don't doubt what you're saying, but look at this. Look at this last ping on Life 360. It's not, I have that on my phone because I have some family members that I track sometimes, you know, uh -huh. but it's not really like 100% accurate. It's within probably a couple blocks where okay. it pings. So right there, it looks like he's close to the bridge by the water, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where he's at. You know, he could be a block up. He could be on the bridge. He could be on the uh -huh. other side of the bridge. But what does that last image show us? That area where the signs that say road closed, is that near a bridge? Is that near a body of water? Supposedly, I don't know. Let's see. So there's a park right here. But there's two bridges, it looks like. See, there's yeah, one yeah. here. He, he would have had to cross one. Okay. So he had had to cross one of those bridges. Right. Okay. So the body of water is present, ever present then in its last known locations. Life 360 ping near James Robertson Parkway. The last yeah. contact with the friends was Man, after they didn't show the damn bridge. I believe that one of them had tried to reach out to him. I don't remember if it was by phone or by text. I think he said that he heard. Okay. Look at this shot right here. This looks like, do you think this would be a bridge? I don't know because it's road construction, if it's a barrier for road construction. But does it say road closed? Yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah, it could be a rebuilding of a bridge, sure. And he does go that like way, he doesn't he? like he was outside. He could hear a lot yeah. of love. No, uh, he doesn't. He goes right past it. Outside. Okay, now look up here at the top. This okay. looks like it could be the bank. It looks like the water. It looks like the river. Yeah, this looks like the water. So supposedly if if his phone pinged and he went past this area, then there wouldn't be another bridge down here that his um his phone stopped pinging at. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um maybe maybe that's that's a little, I don't know. Uh, but he couldn't give any more information. Okay, and there it is. To... Perfect. See how there's the park area? Yeah. So there, that looks like water to me. It what does. It does. It's either water or another road. I mean, he seems to be walking um, no. straight up right. Jeff sent yeah. me another video. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up actually speak to him police have spent days scouring the area for any clues but metro cold case sergeant robert nelson says okay see they're obviously under a bridge right there see the pillar yeah now that's now if anybody is in that area it would be it would be nice to see if somebody goes down there and looks for a smiley face yeah in broad daylight obviously with a friend <laughs> <laughs> and not drunk right not drunk maybe maybe an armed friend <laughs> yeah not drunk at all right but see if that plays through if it shows if there's any they're I also if there's any digging through that. riley's call nope. logs text messages and any location pings that could have gotten lost some of the data we're still waiting on there's a legal process when you're getting some of this okay look at this area right here doesn't that look like a wall that there would be either a ramp coming down or maybe that's next to a building where you would walk up it. Yeah, it does. It looks like a wall. And this says detour. So do you think, I mean, I'm just speculating here. Do you think this would be right before the road close sign over here? I don't think, I don't think so because the road close sign seems to have a lot of active walkers on it. It yeah. was around other people. This was before that stretch of, so I think he runs from here. If you keep playing it, if it's still the same, I don't know where, where we are, but he comes into the scene kind of running, remember? And yeah. then you see him walking. So I think this is where he came running from. Okay. Okay. But play it forward and see. Okay, let's see. It's information. And so sometimes it's multiple steps and a lot of it depends on the company that you're trying to get that information, whether it's social media or a cell phone company. They're also looking for information on the Apple Watch Riley was wearing. I asked a phone location specialist what else could... Okay, so his, they're looking at his Apple Watch. Right. Not trying to get off topic here, but what the f what if Brian had an Apple Watch or a Samsung watch? 
He turns his phone off, but his watch is still on. So his well, they search for all of that in their search <laughs> warrant application. I'm not going to get that started yet. We can talk about that later. But that just hit my mind just then. All right. Well then, I won't hit your mind anymore. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I'm observing just just like you, and I wish that I could pull up the other one really quickly. Um, well, you could bring this up on Google Maps. You just need the the intersection that is. Do you know what the intersection is? Um, let me see what WTMZ.com watch 2024 strand. It's called Luke's Bridge. That's that's what what's his name is saying. Luke's Bridge in Nashville. Okay. Let me see here. Third Avenue, zoomed right in on it. Did you? Yeah, we're gonna look here, see what we got. So, okay, let's let me put this on the screen. Luke's thirty-two bridge is actually that's the bar he was at. Right. That's the bar he was at. Right. So thirty-two yeah. bridge. You you would have to. Did he got was were they searching Cumberland Park? Is that what they said? Hold on a second. Let me get the the map. Okay, so if you're looking at the map, there's the bar right there. Yeah, he had to walk across the bridge to get over to that park. So he's right here. The John. They're, they're saying they're saying that he walked down here because we saw the park, Nashville Public Square Park, and there's a bridge right there, and there's a. There's a Municipal Hall of Fame Museum. And this is where supposedly was the last ping. Maybe we can go down that road. Okay, there's there's the bar he was at. Right. Third Avenue and... Do a full 360. Now, that, that building is straight across the street. Go to that building straight across the street. Yep, go forward. Keep going. Now, see the grate on the ground and see what looks like that gray wall? I'm I, That looks like the area he was filmed walking by. Turn around now. Okay, maybe it's not. There's too many windows. Okay. Okay, there's another wrong. wall. There's another wall up here. Right? I mean, where, where did they catch him on camera? You would think it wouldn't be too far from that bar. No. It's, it's not going that way. See, so there's, the there. there's another building right there. Yeah, but those big openings that weren't weren't there. But it was that kind of a stone. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So where did he go when he left that bar? In what direction? They're telling us he ended up across. Did he end up across the river or no? Let me go ahead and go back out so I can see the map. Okay, let's go down to the bar. So we'll. It looks like from the bar, we're going to go, this would be east, right? He went which way? Use your mouse pointer. Just just draw it down a line where you think he went. He leaves the he bar and goes. This here. way. He went this way and then along the river. So whatever street this is, this would be. So, so he made a left at the river. Okay, that would be. did i just do <laughs> y'all be patient with me don't come after me now okay that would be yeah he could have first been avenue out. first avenue in so he would this would be right at the end of the street okay this is right at the end of the street there is a bridge and the bar is back this way see there's the bar right up that way so let's go up this street see if you see the wall yeah, they caught him on a camera what it looked like gee i don't see anything on either side that looks huh. like a white wall 
So let's well, it was go actually ahead. concrete colored, in my opinion. It wasn't necessarily white as much as it was stone or yeah. concrete colored. You know, it was like a natural color, whatever the product was made out of. Okay, so he got see, so he got down here, down by the water. There's the water. See the bridge up ahead? Oh yeah, I see that. Okay, he so didn't go across. Did he continue walking down this street? Supposedly, this work? supposedly this is. I mean, this is the route that it looks like he took, because there's a park up ahead. But there's nothing alongside. He wasn't caught on camera here, though, because look, it's wide open. Yeah, you're right. Right. He and he was going the other way. Yeah. Right. So you think I need to turn around? They see him crossing at First Avenue and on North Street. Let's see where that is. Um, First there, Avenue. First North. Avenue and North Street, which is. First Avenue North, right? What else did he say it was? First Avenue North on Gay Street. Church Street. Where the hell is Gay okay, Street? Let, let me go back to the map. They don't okay. seem like somebody with a boycott. Okay, the there's, there's, <laughs> there's the bar. Why we have protests all over that road? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Church Street? No, Gay Street. Third, oh. First, read what he said. First <laughs> Avenue North on Gay Street. Okay? I, I see First Avenue South, First Avenue North. Where the hell is Gay Street? I don't see it. There is no Gay there's, Street. There's Second. There's Third. There's Church Street. There's Bank Street. Fourth. There's Union Street. And then, then you run out of streets. You have no more roads. There's Molly Street. Commerce, Commerce Street. See, I don't Bro. think he went this far down. I think he headed this no. way. He headed this way, but I don't see Church Street. I see Commerce. Oh, there's Church. Yeah, but where's the okay, where's Gay There's the bar. So did he go down this road before the river and then headed that way down Church, you think? There's Bank. There's Gay Street. <laughs> Where? Right here. <laughs> right along the river. Right before. Okay, hang on. Right along the river. This. Okay, there's, there's Gay Street right there, Jeff. Gay and First Street Avenue. So. Let me hang on a second. Let me look at where you're looking at. Where's the bar in that picture? Okay, let me, let me go back there. Okay, this is Gay Street right here along the river under that bridge. Okay, the bar, it goes, it goes the under the bar bridge. Is right here. Direction. Okay. Okay, the bar is right here. So Gay Street is right here. So First Avenue North the bar is obviously. Is way yeah, so it's way this, down. Yeah. Okay, First Avenue North is the street that I was going down. So yeah, at you, the end, I saw it. At the end right here at the Square Park, he would have had to either go across the park and hit Gay Street right here and walk. Let me take that route. Yeah, I'm seeing where Gay Street is. And Gay Street brings you right up on the shore and brings you underneath the expressway. Okay, this right. would be. Yeah. Okay, this is Gay Street. Right. Hey, maybe it was the bridge wall that they caught him on. This wall. Yeah, could have been. How or far does that wall go? Eh, look at the other side there. Yeah, they're no, pretty. There's no, grid, there's no grids in the ground there that he walked across. Okay. Well, let's go up this way a little bit. But I could see this being an area where people congregate homeless people. Yeah. Right? It's not thoroughly out of the city, but it's kind of away from the city. So when, within it. where would the last place that he has phone pinged at? Gay and uh, I think what he said. Gay and First Avenue North. 
Okay, so it's right. <laughs> We're at the church on Gay Street. <laughs> There's a Nissan plant across the river from Gay Street. But let me oh, see some. A what plant? A Nissan. Okay. Nissan Motors. It's a Nissan Stadium, not a plant. That's a stadium. Okay, there's there's a wall, but I don't think that's the wall either. But the wall that we see, it looks like an embankment going upward. Do you you get what I'm saying? It looks like an on ramp or something. Let right. Me go, let me go show you guys again. Okay, let me go back a little bit. Okay, did you see that? There's a bicycle. There's a green bicycle tag on the road. See it? Right here. So this looks like where there's a detour sign, there's... The hell are you looking at? I'm looking at a picture here that shows me Gay Street. Where's your pointer? Oh, my bad. I gotta go back to that that page. Sorry. <laughs> hey, work with me here, man. I'm I'm learning. I'm looking at it on my end. <laughs> okay, let me go back. Can you see the video now? To get a of its location yeah yeah okay see the yes the bicycle area yes so this is the, there's construction there but i don't know what area that would be is it is it the see is it that, that it's kind of okay so i don't think that's the issue the the place we saw him walk by those road close signs although it kind of with those that's what it looks like is at the end of that street there, road closed. Yeah. But there also looks like there's a there's a flasher. See it between the two signs? Yeah. With a yellow, it looks like it's got a yellow flasher on it, even though it isn't on. I wonder okay. if, if that video, if we played that video again of him walking by the closed road, if if it's that that corner. Jeff says Second Avenue and Church Street is what one site says. So you're wanting me to go by the one he go to. The friends was after he left Luke Bryan's. ...onto Church Street and Gay Street, then disappearing after this last life. The friends was after he... ...onto Church Street and Gay Street, then disappeared. A Riley was kicked out of Luke's bar on Broadway Friday night while on a Mizzou fraternity trip. He told friends he was heading back to their hotel. The video shows him walking up 3rd Avenue North, turn... Okay, so what area is that? Turning onto Church Street and Okay, I see where I see where he went. So he, he you here's where we got confused. He went down, he left the bar, he went up Third Street to Church Street, made a right on the church. Church crosses over and becomes gay. <laughs> and then <laughs> and I, I mean I'm not saying that for a fact. It truly does. Cross over First Avenue and get, and that's where they say First Avenue and Gay Street. But he came from church. Okay, so, so which we want to find. Yeah, go from the bar right out the bar, and the first the first street becomes. Is it the first street? First, second, third okay. Avenue. If you come Third. out of the bar and you make a left, your first right is going to be. Hang on. The stupid thing. I got a problem. Okay, with there's second. You see the map? There's first, second. So I would say third. Okay, there's third. Third is where the corner of Luke's bar, Luke's 32 bridge. That's the bar he was kicked out of. He left okay, that. And so he, we're he going. Went. Okay, let's go down that wall, that road, and then. Right. And see if you see any of that, that camera stuff. So it's on third. Okay, so let's go to third street. Third to church. Then you make a, a right on church. Okay, we'll go up the street. Okay. 
Jeff, I'll look at that here in a second. Um, man, I wish you could send this on StreamYard. I could, it would be easier to see. Okay, I don't see anything so far. There's third to Church Street, you said? Right. This looks like a lot of bars and a lot of parking garages. It does, and it's a straight shot. So you go from 3rd Avenue, and your very first intersection is going to be, you know, that's Commerce, going to be what your second intersection. Okay, so what intersection is this? So go, go from... Uh, this is Church Street right here. Yeah. And go from Luke's Bar, which is right right on third. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going straight. Street. I'm going straight. That was Church Street. Well, there's a blurred out building, so I don't know if that has anything to do with what we're doing. Okay, we got a we got a building up ahead that could be the building. See, it starts looking like construction everywhere. Yeah. See, there says loading zone. There's a building with pillars, a lot of construction still. Okay, what street is this? This is Union Street. So church and union, so gays up ahead. I think this is fuck. It's fuck street. It is. It's not easy to do. Right? It, it could drive you fucking nuts. <laughs> I'm, I'm going in the direction that's correct, but the first intersection I got to is called Broadway. What am I doing Dedrick, on Broadway? Dedrick Street. So, did I go too far? This is it. I found. No, did I find it? I'll tell you if I found it. I don't think so. But on Third Avenue, there is. Yeah, I went too far. Kind of a wall. Let me look at the map. I went too far. Okay, we went down third. See Charlotte. Definitely at Second Avenue and Church. Okay, so there's Second Avenue right here. So it would be at the corner. Jeff, you're saying? Let's see. Second Avenue and where's Church? Okay, right here. Let's start right here. There it is. I found it. You found it? The building is on Church Ave, Church Street. It's by Church. Um, and it turns from there to over to Gay. So, okay. Yeah, so when you come around the third. corner of listen, when you come around the corner of third, when when you come from Third Avenue, do I make, make a make right? right? And you make a right on the Church Street. Okay. You go by a fenced-in parking area, for, and then you'll see that building that he walked by, and they caught right him on the camera. Right you here, see the right? Grates? Yep. See, yep, there it is, right there on the right. You see the grates on the floor? Yeah. That's okay. The that, that's good exactly job. It, right? Good job. Good job. Thank you, Jeff. You too, man. Right here. Here's the. Here's the wall. Yeah. Well, what's ahead? Is this uh? Sure. Okay. That's Gay Street. That turns into Gay. The church street turns into Gay Street. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. You're going across second. Keep going. Okay, so I'm going to cross this. So Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Keep going all the way through the intersection, and you'll be on gate. Now you're – keep going. and Across this intersection, that's Gay Street right there. It's where it begins. So he walked from third to church. Church then turns into gay, and he continues. Okay, gay, gay, gay kind of goes around. Yeah. Okay. And it follows the water. And then he took gay um, to um, uh, up, up there where he showed you there. I forget. Okay. The well, look. Yeah. Look at the water. Look how, you know, there's nothing much to keep you from falling in. I mean. No. But if he fell in, you would think that there'd be a trace of the body. Yeah, that's the other conundrum here, man. I mean, how fast is the current? That, that that could be an issue too. If there's a lot of current there, 
I'm but I mean, did he, river. so he supposedly kept going up to up Gay Street. He didn't cross this little park to go down here, this area. You think? No, but it's kind of funny because there's another murder scene for a guy this age, the same same kind of scenario with the way that's laid out. Really? Um, yeah. How far down yeah. on Gay Street? I forget how far he went, but I think he went all the way up to the to the expressway, to, just before the expressway bridge. Okay. Yeah. You can see the camera on the far end of the red brick building. Yeah, you're right. That was that was the place yeah. we found it. Good job. Right. So anyway, this guy is missing. We know we we burned a lot. I'm looking at this fucking man. Okay, so here he is walking, but I didn't see a road. Um, a road close sign. So is that further down? You think? A what? That road close. Like, look at the right here. The road close sign. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, look at where he's walking. Yeah, but the road close signs are behind him. This area. We're getting towards the end of his walk here. Okay. Right. And the last time they seen him apparently was on Church Street, where you where we found the building he walked by. Okay, and so that's the last video surveillance of the guy. That's the last location where his phone pinged, right? Right. But okay. obviously, there's a video of him walking by that building. Right. So what right. I'm saying, what I'm saying is this, though: if this was the last location, that building right there is where we identify. Where you guys told me, did he go up Gay Street or did he keep walking forward? You know, like. No, he went Not up really. Gay Street, and he went all the way up by where that expressway is. Don't you remember? We found the road up. We found Gay Street, and then up by the expressway is where he, where that that uh, there's a bridge there that you could cross over from. Okay, Gay okay. Street turns into a bridge that allows you to go across the river, I believe. Okay, it's coming up. Here's the bridge. Keep going. There's oh, steps good. over. There's steps over here too. All right. See those steps to go up? Right, but now turn around. Turn around. And if you keep going, go ahead, yeah, keep going a, up the road. There's another bridge, you're right. And you got to take bigger jumps. or, or... <laughs> But that looks like a railroad bridge right there, though. Yeah, it does. It but I can see like homeless that. people being over in this area, too. Yeah, but night. I don't... See, there's take, like, yeah. What, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say take it, take it right to the end. Okay. Fucking Google. And then we we can get off of this this poor kid. Yeah. <coughs> well, I'm just looking at the water. How easily accessible it is. I mean. Yeah. He looked pretty inebriated. He busted his ass on that one where he was running. So, do you see him, you know, maybe going over this wall? But it still looks a ways from the water. It's not yeah, like... but right I don't know that going over that wall would have been, you know, I mean, so that means it was a fatal, it, it, you know. Well, there's a know little area. Like. There's a little area right there where you can go now. Right. But it's more likely he got grabbed over here or attacked, I would suspect, than him simply falling into the river. The... the the other question is, is this part of his route going to where he was going? We don't know that. Where's the fraternity? Yeah. Is this? Yeah, yeah, he was. We really didn't. I mean, he didn't tell. They didn't tell us the, where the fraternity guys were. Where I'm um, staying at. Right. I right. cannot so. picture a 12 gauge as a royal commentator. What that mean? <laughs> I have no idea. Forty-five minute, twelve gauge. <laughs> yeah, we did. We milked this one for a long time, and we didn't have to. But yeah, we we're at fifty to... minutes already. Good God! Yeah, what the hell are you doing? You're chasing down video. I don't know. Well, we're let's doing research during the stream. <laughs> Guilty. Hey, true crime, baby, true crime. <laughs> um. Well, let's uh let's move on and. And start talking about what we're going to talk about. I'll save that other one for my own little podcast. Yeah, do a little more research on it, and you could podcast that or talk about that or find out more about it. 
where where the you know I would suggest you if you're gonna do it, look to see where the fraternity is in relation to what the, the walk this kid took. Yeah. Right. Jeff says, How many video clips are there of Riley walking? I only saw four, Jeff. I small I saw, I saw one of them where he's walking by that building. I saw another one where he's walking across what looks like a bridge where he's with the crowd of people. I saw another one where he busts his ass. And I saw another one where he's walking upright. So okay. yeah. I think there's the about way. four. Yeah. And they're all consistently bringing him towards the area that they're talking about. They, The one image places him on Church Street in front of that building. Yeah. Right? And if you keep walking, it brings you right to Gay Street. So if they're saying that his last location was Gay Street, then, then that's consistent with the video so far. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, all that makes sense. The point is, though, why walk that way? What was the need to go that way if, if there was a need at all? Well, one thing that I heard, too, in that video that you and I talked a little bit about a while ago was the phone pings and how that seemed to be more prevalent and how they're finding people or their last location, which has been for a while now, like you said. But um, how precise would, how did that phone just stop working? You know what I mean? Like the last location. Do you think he was a... Do you think his phone got taken from him? Do you think he was robbed? Um, I would look in the area for for cell phone, broken cell phone parts or cell phone to see if it had been taken and smashed. Yeah. Right? As a way to, for, the, for the perpetrator to hide their tracks. Or maybe it's in the river. Right? Who knows what happened to him? Maybe he turned it off. That's, that's the problem with these missing cases. You don't know if this kid just walked off into La La Land. He gave up his life. Right. He left his keys in his wallet, but he took his phone, and then his phone shows a last known location, which could be consistent with somebody trying to escape their life and just be gone with it all. Right. right. Exactly. Or, or it could be he was abducted. Right. Or, yeah. or, or it could be he fell in the river. That would explain his phone turning off and him vanishing all at the same time, because now the phone is at the bottom of the river and, and he floated away. Right. So True. it could be. It could be any one of those three and maybe even more possibilities. But, we, you know, you just don't know until you find the person or the body or a crime scene. And until then, you, there's just no way to know. Well, it just seems, it seems very sketchy that um, all of a sudden his phone just stopped, you know? Right, but all that's of a sudden, what if his battery turned off? He, you see him, we, we appear, we think he was on the phone as he was walking. Right. What well, it's been my interpretation. Hey, it's been my interpretation as a law enforcement officer for all the cases that I've seen. It's more um, convenient, more than not, of the perpetrator to turn their phone off during the commission of the crime. Right, because they, you know, it's common. I was trying to be. I was trying to be funny right there, you know. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know at this point. This is still a complete mystery, and nothing really is. The only facts we have. Tell a story with it with an ending of vanish. How, what, why, where? We have no clue, and nothing to send us in a direction to give us a clue. Sadly, I don't know. I mean, it, it's quite interesting. Um, so, like you said, I'll have to do a lot more um, research, or you know, if one of you right. guys wants to do research, you know, you or Jeff or whoever wants to come up with me next. Um, if y'all want to do the research, you're more than welcome. But I think it's an interesting case because, I mean, there's so many similarities to what you said as far as the uh, smiley face killer. Yep. I have done research on that, you know. So there there should be, if there was anybody that's a streamer that knows people in Nashville, yeah. and they could go out for a Saturday or Sunday stroll just yeah. casually and walk where those parks are off of Gay Street that walk you down to the water. See if there's any smiley faces drawn anywhere around there. Right? Yeah. Because that's I mean, a consistent because... symbol that shows up in a lot of these. These these are white frat type boys in their early 20s or late teens that go missing near a body of water, coming from a bar, connected to a college. All of that has happened numerous times in our country. And very few of them get actually get reported. And, and if they do get reported, it goes away pretty quick. 
Because do you think, I mean, I want to say this and then let's move on to Idaho, okay? Um, do you think it's because of the, you know, like they have that that perception where you're a hooker, you're a drug addict, you're this. A, a drunken student drinking on a Friday or Saturday night or whenever is almost given the same moniker. Well, they're just drunk. They'll, they'll turn up. Maybe they're you know, went to crash at somebody's house. Maybe they hooked up with somebody or something like that. Do you think that they're given the same moniker as those other people that I just named? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, we part, part, there's a two part problem that I have. One is I was reading your chat room and a comment someone made that I don't know why, why it was made or what's the point. Um, in relation to the Koberger case. And okay. that, that kind of overwhelmed what you were saying. When I read that, I was like, anyway, so I apologize. Okay. Yeah, I was reading the one where, what's her name, Annie Hewitt? She said, I suspect Jack DeCour had a hand in the Idaho 4 case. Then she said, I personally talked right, which to Jack D. on Instagram and DM'd right before they arrested Koberger. Mm -hmm. Great. So if she was talking to him, Jack DeCour is the boyfriend, right? Yeah, but remember what I said, if you're trying to solve this crime? You're, yeah. you're not solving this crime from a computer, from a chat room, from a video cam, from a Google. You're just not. The, the Koberger case. You can't. And, and if people are going to seek to try to solve it or explain it with facts that are not in, in verifiable facts, then there's no sense engaging in that conversation. Yeah. Kind of like what we just did here. We track this kid and we come to the conclusion he's missing. That's the story we were told, <laughs> right? We've concluded that the story they told us up to the point he goes missing is accurate. The route that they claim he took, the the video cams that that are that show that route. So we verified everything they've told us is accurate. Yeah. We've come to the conclusion the kid is gone. Now yeah, we can sit here and make up a hundred reasons to where he went or how he became gone, but none of them are accurate because we have no fact to support them, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So let's say here's another comment from Annie. She says, Jack D admitted to me that he and did was at the corner club bar that night, laid and talked great. to Kaylee and Maddie, then supposedly went home a block away from the murder house and went to sleep. Yeah, good. Good. That's a consistent story. I've heard that from other other people who yeah, said that. You know what it doesn't doesn't mean anything. Whether you talk to him. She, here's my third party stories in my opinion, should come with the story evidence first, actually the evidence first, and then your explanation of the evidence. Not tell me your story, and I just have to take on faith that this actually happened. Right? We we don't know that this person talked to Jack. We have no way to verify that. So Is there anywhere that you can send me those screenshots, Annie? I mean, that would be... Yeah, but even so, what, what does it mean if she did? <laughs> what she's saying is the same thing that's been being said for months. He went home and went to bed. The police told us that. That's no groundbreaking story. Right. That's exactly what he said. So I would just think that if he went home, went to bed, that was in the story. You know, he was asleep. He was a suspect. Him. He was a suspect, right? He 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 clearly was a suspect in in the in the Idaho Four. This is the story that's come from the re the, the investigation of that suspect. That he was there that night. Right. He seen him right. that night. He went home that night, and. uh that's it. So my point is, whatever I don't know what the what what the person in the chat room is trying to create out of that, um, because it, it doesn't it doesn't do anything to the story at all. I guess she would be trying to verify the story, just kind of like what we did to make sure that that um, you know, what she's heard is basically what what is true or not. I mean, I think a lot of times when people do that, when they seek out information, it to, to just make themselves feel like they're not crazy or that, you know, what I've heard, I can, I can, um, I can, yeah, I can say, okay, well, I heard it firsthand from the guy. So therefore what I've heard, you know, I can, I can, um, I can, verify that it, she said he lied about being at the club 
at first she admitted it. I don't see it, so I mean it, it. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, Annie, you know, we're not here to convince you that we're right or you're wrong, anything like that. So I don't want you to take that. Um, Sarge, you know, he, him and I have agreed that, you know, evidence that is based on factual information that we can build a, I guess, build a case on is or more least, relevant least, than hearsay, you know? At least discuss the, at least discuss the fact and still have different opinions, which is perfectly yes. fine, right? Yes. Your, your view of a particular fact may, may be, uh, that, that they're just different than mine, and that's that's perfectly right. okay. But I, I, okay, the significance of this story this story's been out for over a year, yeah, about Jack D in the corner club and him going home and going to bed. And it, and that's all it's been is that story, it doesn't connect to any of the legal documents, any of the filings, any of the motions, any of the arrests, any of the right. right? What does it connect to? I would just be wondering, you know, the fact that, um, you know, him being at the corner club. There was a lot of speculation there for a while, you know, just to talk about this. There was a lot of speculation about was that him? No, was that not him? You know, she finally got the answer if that's really who she was talking to on the other end. You know, if they video chatted or something and she saw that that was really him, then she got clarification that, you know, what she heard is is real in her mind, okay? Yeah, but to us... Fine, which is, listen, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, but what I'm saying is that information is that's it to take the information and then try to try to create a scenario under which Jack was involved in the murders is a, is a bridge too far. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to support that other than you have to read into that and build a conclusion into it. In other, it and other, so it's just another fact. It's like when they told us they serotypically uh, took a suspect cigarette butt and had it tested, right? Yeah. We don't need to know who that suspect is because the end result was that that, that DNA wasn't part of the crime scene based right. on what they took, right? But knowing it is fine, knowing that Jack did that is fine, it's great for reference because somewhere down the road, what if he becomes implicated? Then this information yes. becomes a relevant part of the discussion. Yes, but until exactly. he becomes implicated, it's just another, you know, it's kind of like you're driving down the street. You don't keep note of every road you pass. Right. They're not all important. You're trying to get to a specific location. And that, that's all I'm saying. There's the third party discussions and these trying to solve the crime by including drugs or other players that don't have any other factual connection to the case. His connection is he knows them or dated them, may have been out at the same place at them that night, and then he went home and went to bed. Exactly. There's other people with a way stronger database of connection, availability, motive. Well, There's more people, and they're named in the police documents. Yeah, and we're talking about Occam's Razor. Showalter right. was right there with them, caught on camera. You know, he was there at the right. grub truck. He was, you know, he was the last supposedly person other than a driver to have seen them alive. So his would be more suspicious than the other Jack, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and you know, there, there's there's a couple of if you're trying to solve this crime across the okay. internet, I, I, I suggest it's a, it's a it's an exercise in futility. If you're trying to understand whether the person that's accused is rightfully accused and soundly accused, then that exercise is something you can do because there's information that you can count on as being fact. I don't know if Jack was involved. I can't say that he was or wasn't. And right. I don't really want to discuss him until until it becomes relevant that he does become part of the story. You follow? Of me? course, of course. Yeah. And another right. thing, based on what I've learned in my criminal justice classes, an interview is conducted on the witnesses surrounding the crime. Right. So the fact that they probably interviewed him, they probably put down a note that says, "Well, he." He was inconsistent with telling us he was at the corner club when he said he just went right to bed. That's an inconsistency, but is it enough to make him a probable suspect? Probably not. Let's just mm -hmm. start next to it, and we'll look into it further if other evidence connects him. We find the hat. We find something that he was wearing that night at the crime scene. Then we can pretty much put, you know, take him into interrogation. Right. Right. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, she's making more arguments, and I and I listen. It's a theory that 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 may it's a theory, but we have no fact to support that he had any involvement in that. So she mentions a whole bunch of different things, and, and no one's discounting that. Right. Okay? And and I agree with Sabrina. There's no way this is this kid is probably either going to get a hung jury or acquitted. Okay. And they'll yeah. never solve this case because you know something, making an arrest of any kind was the most important thing that town needed. Brief in the college every day for months. What to what to what avail is the college that heavily involved in a murder that wasn't committed on their campus? Right, right. The, and why is the police answering to the college? Because the college pays the police bill, and now we can start jumping into politics, but we won't. But the point is that that big cluster F is what it is. And to suggest or try to, I don't know how you can solve the case from out here. Yes, Jeff was well, called. Time. <laughs> yes, Jeff dated one of them. Yes, Jeff was out at the bar. Yes, Jeff said he went home. But how does that make Jeff the killer any more than Brian turned off his phone? And you know what? Jeff has a K-bar knife, too. And a sheaf. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did he go, I mean, you we, know? I get your point, Sarge. I get it. And that's what makes these panels so awesome. Is that we can talk about this stuff. We can right. we can have our beliefs and we can, you know, we can say, you know, this is what I believe and this is what I'm thinking about. That doesn't make you wrong. That's your perception of your own truth. You know. Well, I, you know, again, when you're I just I just like to stick with the facts we can Yeah, we can, I understand that. There. I do too. I do too. If I'm going to talk about a, a you know, a, anything, if you're going to talk about an engine or putting in a clutch to a car, you, you, you don't, you know, you don't bring in what it was for electric cars in 1901. I know it's a car and I know it may have had a clutch, but it's not relevant to your Honda 2020. <laughs> okay. Jeff says, but I tell you what, if they found my DNA on a knife, she's laying next to a stab victim. I'd actually think about confessing yeah. because it must have been me. Yeah, you go right ahead and do that. Not me. Not me. I actually robbed the place and my fingerprints were actually on the hinge and I never thought once of confessing. Why? Do you know why? <laughs> no, tell me why. Because I was the, the, the building manager that just painted the hallway. Them finding the, my finger, fingerprints was conclusive evidence. I, I had my hands on that hinge. And how did the house get entered? It was through hinge pin removal. How do I know? I did it. But because I had just painted that hallway that day, Right. And you found my fingerprints on the hinge, even knowing I committed the crime, even knowing you got that fingerprint. I wasn't admitting to it because it was perfectly OK for my fingerprints to be there. I was the painter. Exactly. So so what I'm saying is when you have a case of transfer DNA like we do here with Brian Koberger, I. Uh, I've seen many cases like Amanda Knox. A lot of people don't know Amanda Knox was convicted on transfer DNA. Did you know that? I did a video on that. Yes. There's many cases that that were that were convicted on transfer DNA and they were overturned. And, and the reason they're overturned is, and this is kind of stunning because it applies to Koberger. The reason they were overturned was because they had one location of transfer DNA for the person they're accusing. And then they had several other pieces of transfer DNA, okay, in right. locations that would also have been consistent with the crime. OK, so this one black guy spent years in jail until they did a DNA analysis. And thank God they kept the, all the original evidence and they found his DNA on the woman uh, on her on her nail or something. Right. And they convicted him at trial. But there was another unknown male DNA in multiple locations on that body that they never disclosed and never tested. Right. Right. And that DNA that was found in so many different locations that that showed that that person was most likely the rapist, not the guy you convicted. Transfer yeah, DNA I also, also heard of it. I think we're talking about the same case. It's the case where um, there was a a police officer that pulled over to help somebody. He got the DNA of the guy that was hurt, and uh -huh. somehow that transferred to to the crime scene. And that's There's how they come back. Yeah. Another guy in the back of an ambulance. You know those heart monitor things they put on your finger? Yeah. Remember? A woman that they picked up that was severely uh, beaten, they put the same thing on her without cleaning it. And this guy's transfer DNA got under her fingernail. So okay. when they searched for suspects, they found that guy's DNA and they went after him. But he, he had no, nothing to do with it. In fact, oh. 
Of the, course. the transfer of course. DNA came from from a medical piece of equipment for emergency services. There's another. There's another. There's a movie about this too. There's a guy really? in England. Listen to this. There's a guy in England. The English kept finding all of these murders that were all similar, okay, with with stabbing murders, right? And at every single one of the crime scenes, they kept finding the same DNA. How do you like them apples? So yeah. now they find a way to match this DNA to a person and they arrest the guy, okay? Or they go they go get the guy. Whether they arrest him or not is, may not be true. But they right. go get the guy and, and they, they find out that this guy isn't the killer. He's the guy who was putting the buccal swabs in the containers and then sealing them up and sending them out the door without gloves on, okay? This guy contaminated the buccal swabs. That's why his DNA was showing up in so many different crime scenes. That's the problem. With I mean, and we, and we could go, you know, in this case, the Idaho 4 case, if we wanted to go down that rabbit hole, we could create a whole story about that. We really could. Yeah. Yeah, but would that make it would would that make it true that we we somehow found the avenue that led to his arrest to his possible yeah. conviction? No, all we did was put pieces together. It's kind of right. like there's individuals out there that every little name they hear. I saw one earlier where they were talking about the big guy with the coke can, and they they somehow incorporated his name into the Linda Lane footage. So he was obviously at the Linda Lane footage and then ended up back at the grub truck in time to see Maddie and Kaylee. And somehow he was involved in the whole fight club thing. I mean, we could put all these things together and we could make it sound like we solved the crime, as you were saying. But that doesn't mean we solved anything. All we did was put potential innocent victims or innocent witnesses or people that we don't even know were there based on a name. You know how many people have the same name in this world? Yeah, but it, it's to me that it's, you know, I, I have said there's been some creators and I've been pretty nasty with a few of them because they create these stories that have no relevance. And even listen, even in the remote, chance of all the dust in the universe that this one piece of dust is real okay you can't have other people just generally look at it and, and see what you're saying is there it's insanity right and and to get to and the here's the problem is it's not even so much the creators that are doing this but the audience gets tickled by this the audience seems drawn into the drama and wanting to discuss the drama of it when you can't really make a connection to any known fact and, right. and I just don't think that that's a good idea. You're bringing up all this. 400 people were watching this on their cell phone. Well, we don't know that to be true. We don't know it to be true. Could it be true? Sure. But do you need to make all of these streams and try to prove that it's true? No. No, if it's true, it will it will become known, right? And so all of that speculation, exactly. all of these crazy stories are just, to me, it's entertainment. It isn't true crime. When you go down those roads, and and that's fine if people want to be entertained with that, then I'm not that morbid. Have at it. If you want to claim that Ethan was getting his face urinated on, and that that you want to be in a stream where that's what the provider is going to offer, I say go for it. But I, that's not to me true crime. It just isn't. No. You know, I've started this this channel. You know, I don't know if you've you've seen some of my streams or you know, some of the stuff that I put out, but most of it has nothing to do with the individuals that are being accused. I mean, there's the main players, but there's not any of the, well, this is the second tier people. This is the third tier people. These are, are the fourth right. tier people. They're, it basically sticks to the to the five people or the, the other two surviving roommates. Either that or I don't even talk about it because, why talk about all these other people that were seen at the grub truck for what reason? They don't have any relevance. Right. So a guy flexed in a shirt with no, you know, he was wearing a tank top. Big deal. Does that make him a killer? Well, it doesn't. And so far, that that's the catch-22. People are, are, are up in the air as to whether this gentleman is the killer or not. And they're in the air for a lot of good reasons. And some people aren't in the air because they see those reasons in a different light. That's fine. Exactly. And that's right? fine. 
Yeah. But it's the factual data that's discussed, not the theoretical data that could be that I, I've come to the conclusion. I don't see this guy. I don't see evidence enough to have even charged the guy so far. I just don't. When I look at the, the filings, that there's no DNA of the victims, that there's no electronic connection of Koberger to any of the victims. When you look for all of these things, and those things are the argument against him doing it, you, I don't know, man. I, I You got to overcome that, because if you don't have anything more than just transfer DNA, that in fact had to be modified with a software program that's protected, that you can't even, as a defendant, get access to to see how accurate that software is. I don't know if you realize that, but that's exactly what's happening here, where the DNA software that they used is considered proprietary, private corporation, private business, right? It's not a government entity. You can't FOIA it. So Mr. Kohlberger's DNA, its determination, its creation into a testable sample for genealogy done at Othram Labs can never be questioned. How That's well, that to me is not American. Well, going back to the facts of the case, you know, I understand what you're saying. But getting back to the factual stuff that has been stated, the FBI even told them this is a tip. This is not to be used in court. This Correct. is a tip. And I think I've heard you say on another panel, gave an example of, okay, someone's selling drugs. You go and you tell the police, hey, so-and-so is selling drugs out of my building. You gave them a tip. You don't expect right. to be called in the court as a as a witness right. to him right. selling drugs. Is that not you correct? Expect to, you expect them to investigate them and come to their own conclusion he's selling drugs. Exactly. Unless you can prove what you got a video or recording and the drugs you bought from him, right? But just be aware that if you bring that to a police station, you in fact committed a crime by buying the drugs. Okay. So it's a catch-22. You're right. That's why it's an anonymous tip. That way the tipster is completely you, you can't you don't know how they came across the information. You're not required to know. So you run with it. And they I didn't do that, that here. That, you know, at the defense, I think I believe that that's why they're pushing that so hard because they know that pretty much everything associated with that quote unquote tip has been destroyed. So there's no way that they can have a paper trail that leads right back to the IGG. I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong. Right here, I got I got a, 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 another question here that I, this is this was the one that got me into this. This is why I got even paid attention to crime at all. When you read the probable cause for an arrest, there's nothing in the probable cause that definitively places him at that house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because of that, and you then argue that you did not use the DNA to get the arrest. Okay, so. You mean to tell me that a court approved a warrant on a phone that was turned off and on photographs of a car miles away from the scene when it comes back on? And during the time of the crime, we, we have, if that Linda Lane footage is accurate, if that's real, we now have footage of vehicles in that area. And the one that actually goes around the building and parks isn't even a Hyundai Elantra. We can prove that. So now I have to ask the question. What did you arrest the guy on? Because the story in the PCA describes Linda Lane. It describes the movements of those vehicles. They claim it's one car. It's not. It's two. Okay. They arrested him on physical characteristics, I believe. Characteristics of what? Bushy eyebrows. <laughs> Five foot ten you, and tall. That, <laughs> see, here's what I'm saying. If you take out the DNA, what's left in the PCA that justifies his arrest? That's That's the simplest question to put. Take out the DNA. What's left? That's what the prosecution just the told the judge. The circumstantial evidence is left. But but can you arrest somebody and take away their freedom on just circumstantial evidence without some likelihood, some evidence it's, that likely says he did this? It's been done. It's been done yeah. in cases. It has know. been done. Um, they, you know, they have the obvious reason to appeal these things you know it's been done but they can appeal them um yeah, and i'm sure so a lot of them have won based on the circumstantial evidence wasn't strong enough to hold up the evidence that they did have 
Right. Do you, do you remember the statement that was in one of Ann's filings where she said the FBI relied heavily upon a vehicle going the wrong way at the wrong time on Ridge Road? Okay. Do you remember the story when they came forward on December 7th and said they were looking for a, a 2011 to 2013 white Hyundai Elantra? Not because they believe it was involved in the crime, but because they may have information that could help them. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. I'm telling you that based on those, those two pieces of information, they tell a story. The story they tell is the car you see on Linda Lane is the 11 to 13 Hyundai Elantra they were looking for. Not because it was involved in the crime, but because they may have seen something that could help them. That's what the Linda Lane footage is. And the footage of Brian Koberger is, in fact, on Ridge Road going the wrong way at the wrong time. That is, in fact, the 2014 to a 2016 Hyundai Elantra. And I'll bet you dimes to donuts that Brian Koberger admits that's him in that car. Okay, and I say that because that car was going the wrong way at the wrong time to have been involved in any of the crimes that they alleged that he committed. That is his ace in the hole because the Linda Lane footage, not only do we have no way to identify that from what little we saw, but the fact that the police simply came forward asking for that specific year make model car based on an right. ex FBI expert's analysis makes that a valid analysis of the vehicle. He didn't change his opinion. He, there are two separate stories that people have stuck together. One specifically says Ridge Road. The other one from the police says they were looking specifically for a specific vehicle in the area of the house, of the crime scene, that may have seen something. So they're talking about an Elantra on Queen Road, not an Elantra on Ridge Road, you see? Yeah. That's, that's how I think this gets destroyed by them. That's you why know, she's you just... saying... You right. just said something that made me think, okay, what if, okay, this is strictly circumstantial speculation. What if he dropped off the weapon to somebody and then so, drove off? There was another car. No, because he wasn't on, he wasn't on. See, they don't they have him on Taylor or no, they don't have him on Linda Lane. They don't have him on Queen Road. I'm telling you that the vehicle that they're that you're seeing in that Linda Lane footage is the 11 to 13 Hyundai Elantra that the police were looking for, not as a suspect. Okay, and his is the 15, right? His is a 15. This is this okay. is what happened. Here's what happened. The cops saw the Linda Lane footage. They identified the vehicles in Elantra. Some FBI expert somehow was able to see the view of an angle of that car to tell him what year it was. They came out and wanted assistance from those people. They okay. weren't alleging that that person was a wanted suspect. They just wanted to talk crime. to him, right? Okay, now, to... now, just let me, just, because I get, listen, watch okay, the Linda ahead. Lane footage, watch the Linda Lane footage, and you'll see that Honda Elantra come in a couple of times and drive off. Yes. Okay? When you see the car come in that goes around the building, that is not a Honda Elantra. So, knowing that, let me tell you the story. The Hyundai Elantra that they're talking about is on Linda Lane footage. It does come into the parking lots. It does turn around and leave. It does do a three-point turn at King and Queen Road and come back in again and then leave. The next vehicle that comes in is a Chrysler 300. So when the police went on TV and said they wanted information, for help from the person in the 11 to 13 Elantra, mm -hmm. that is the car you're seeing. That is why the cops came forward. Because of that Elantra video on Linda Lane. What Ann Taylor oh, yeah. told us is that Mr. Koberger is on a camera on Ridge Road at the wrong way at the wrong time. And that's what the FBI relied on to identify the 2014 to 2016 Elantra. Okay. Okay. They don't say it's Koberger's, but they take the Ridge Road picture and they identify that as a 14 to 16. And I'm telling you, they're two different stories. But the problem is the coincidence of the, the make model of the car is the same. That's what threw everybody off. Everybody thinks the cop made a mistake when he identified the car. Yeah. And they accept that that car on Queen Road is, is Koberger's 14 to 16. And what I'm saying to you is, no, that's not true. That's not what they said to us. Okay. Nobody okay. has argued the police made an identification mistake of the vehicle, nor is Ann making that argument. Ann's argument's clear. They said that they saw a second vehicle without, like they call suspect vehicle one, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. 
And that's that I'm kind of conflation. Of, do you see how the, the facts, if this, if Brian drove a Ford Taurus, this would never have happened. Yeah. But he would but, have drove a truck. Yeah. Well, no, there, Jeff, there, it's been absolutely video shown that that's a Chrysler 300 going around the building and parking. And you, I know you do your videos, but I, to me, this the story, the discussion's over. There's two different cars in that Linda Lane footage. There's no doubt about it. Get a, get a clue is correct. A hundred percent. I'm no fan of anybody. Get a clue and I butt it heads. But I, I accept his explanation of that car being a 300 through my own personal research on it. So, well, let's, I, I'm good let's on that. For, for discussion's sake, let's, let me ask this question. Yeah. Could we be talking semantics here? Okay. No. Could we be talking? Listen to me. Let, hear me out. Okay. Like we say, all the kids that you hear talking, all the kids that you see walking around, all this, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have anything to do with this crime scene. They don't have anything that we know right. of to do with the crime. Right. So this Chrysler 300 could have just been driving past that at that area at, a, at that particular time. Does that mean that that Chrysler 300 or Elantra or whatever you are talking about has anything to do with the crime? I understand the Elantra, but the Chrysler 300, do you really think that could have just been somebody coming home, dropping okay, somebody here's, off? Here's, here's the significance of it. The significance of it is the Linda Lane footage shows that the PCA's description of, of vehicle movement was not Brian Koberger's. In other words, it provides him with reasonable doubt. It, the idea that then they identified a 14 to 16 Elantra on Ridge Road separately, okay, then may in fact give him give him more alibi. That's why he keeps saying, I my alibi is going to come from witness testimony from the prosecution, witness professionals. That's what see, that's why I think people are not hearing what, what Anna's saying. Her case, his alibi is going to be based off the professional expert testimony, okay, that's supplied by the prosecution. The point that I'm making with the cars is one point that's going to be made by her. Their own experts are going to confirm that that Elantra on Queen Road is an 11 to 13, and they'll explain how they determined that. Watch. That's why there's no, I was at some store, I was sleeping. Everybody keeps screaming for an alibi, and I'm telling you, the alibi was always in here. And that's why Koberger's attorney is saying, I really can't give you an alibi until I got all the expert testimony disclosed to me. Her expert testimony is to people that claim he was there. And their claims can be blown up on them. And that's how this is going to go. Okay. You see? Well, that, that I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle on this. You know that. I haven't really, I haven't really gone one way or the other. So, I respect what you're saying. I respect what everybody's saying because, you know, we're not trying to solve the crime. We're just giving what we see has been given to us, and kind and of interpreting. interpreting it. Yeah, interpreting it. You know, who's right, yeah, who's and... wrong. It really doesn't matter. We we don't have a dog in the fight, honestly. We know the the Elantra was identified by the Ridge Road camera by Ann's supplemental Ann's discovery filings, where she had stated okay. that the that the identification of the fourteen to sixteen Hyundai Elantra was made on Ridge Road going the wrong way at the wrong time. Ann Taylor made that statement in a filing, and that's why if you think about what I'm saying, just be fair. If the defense keeps saying that their alibi is dependent upon the professional test or the expert testimony from the prosecution explain to me how my my understanding of what she's saying is inaccurate it, there's no other way to define it that so knowing that that car you could take two different cars two different locations two different identifications that coincidentally the only part that screws it up is that they were both elantras right and but you we, think that you think that's where the conspiracy comes from is the fact that for whatever reason, these two cars were seen at the same time at the same night. Let's say that that's what happened, right? Let's say that that car in Linda Lane that comes up Queen Road and passes the crime scene 
which there's no way anybody can argue that the police would not be interested in that vehicle. That okay. vehicle comes across. Does it not drive past the murder scene? Yes. Doesn't it go turn around and go back and drive out of there? Yes. They're claiming that's Kohlberger in the PCA. What I'm telling you is that that vehicle was identified by the FBI as the 11 to 13. They're wrong in the PCA. And this is what Anna is going to show. When she says that they found a 14 to 16 on Ridge Road going the wrong way at the wrong time, is further confirmation that a 14 to 16 Elantra did not drive by 1120 Queen Road. Okay, so I pulled up the map. Y'all see the map? Yeah. We have a new person in here, PKC. We'll answer your question here in a minute the best we can. Why is she waiting for more video if it's already identified on Ridge Row? We'll answer that here in a second if we can. An alibi that comes so late in the process to me seems like a manufactured no. alibi. You show can I me respond to that? Right? Listen, listen. She said this in the very beginning when they asked for an alibi. Her alibi is going to be highly dependent upon the expert testimony. That was the first reply she ever made in the demand for an alibi. She's not changed her tune at all. She's still making that argument. Okay. Let's look at this map. Okay, so the car was going the wrong way on Ridge Road. The wrong at the, way. At the wrong time, you yeah. know. Okay, so that, just based on wording, the wrong way would be going west. Away from the house. No. It'd be going... The right way would be going away from the house. Why would the that be the right way, way if you're not involved? Okay, is this a one-way street? I don't I don't know. I think it is. I think it's a one-way street. So But Ridge Road Road, you got to take Walenta Drive. That turns into Ridge Road. Yes, there's Walenta right here. Mm -hmm. So Walenta is right here. This is fucked up the way they do all these roads here. This is Walenta, this is Walenta, then it's Ridge Road. And then it goes back to Walenta. I mean, it just it just fucked. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, it, it does. It's got the two roads and one, one straight strip of road, right? Yeah. One continuous yeah. path of road has two names. Name. Yeah. They call it a different name. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going the wrong way at the wrong time, so basically it would say, you know, at this time, this individual's car was caught right here. There's a camera right here on this, on one of these houses. Right, and they caught captured. I think it captured him coming up right here, turning off of Walenta, going up on Ridge Road. I think it's one of these houses that caught the car, if I remember correctly. Okay. So if he's going the wrong way during the commission of the crime, what the fuck was he doing? Was he already over here during the time? No, let's let's Before remember. Time? Let's remember. Wait, remember, Brian Koberger has got the police have already shown us that he's done this drive 12 times previous. And one of those times, while not connected to the network. Okay. So we know that he has this habit of driving late at night. Now you can call that stalking to plan a mass murder. And in fact, we don't know if you're right or wrong, but you could call it that, or you could call it a guy with insomnia. Right. How, but look at this way. I mean, we're strictly just going on our own intellect right now. So, what are the fucking odds that, excuse my language, but what are the odds of you choosing to drive around 12 times in this particular area? What did oh, he man. know that was over here? Like, if I'm over going five to, months, this is over a five month period of time. From right. June so, if I'm around. driving around in this yeah. town, there has to be something there that I can identify as a physical reason for me to even be there in the first place. Is it the university? Is the well, fact that, you know, there's a lot of parties going on, you know, it's, it's a good area to look at stuff. You know, you're going to see some, some pretty women. You're going to, you know what I'm saying? It, there has to be something for me to take this route. Why wouldn't I be down here South of this and going down Karastoga Drive or down yeah, can here. I say, can I just say, let me. <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a car guy. I'm a car guy, and I drive a lot. And and I, I drive I drive um, down the same areas different times, but many times I'll go in the same area many times in a row, and then I'll go in a different area. But but here's the point: I always go in the same different areas. Do you follow what I'm saying? 
So you, you, something could happen while I'm cruising around at night, and they could say it was that white cor- or it was a white car, and I had a white Corvette, right? You could have mistaken it for me. Didn't mean it was me. Right. But my point is that driving is not an act of criminal. It's not wrong. It's not unusual. It is what people do. Right. But my whole point is this is at the time of a crime of a quadruple murder, you happen to have the same type car. You're driving around. You've been you've been caught there 12 other times on your cast data. If you know, I've lived in other towns, so I usually drive around those towns when I go and visit because it's something that reminds me of something else. Like I used to live here. I used to bang this girl that lived in this house. I used to, you know, I yeah, used to maybe, go to the Maybe he's buying store. drugs over there. We know he was a heroin addict, but here's the here's the point I'm trying to say is that he did it. We we can't we can't know why he did it until we do. It's an unknown quantity. We just know that he did. Right? Right. Now, now the police say that that proves that he stalked them. And that's one possible, but that's a potential thing that could be true. Right? There, there's a hundred other reasons why he could have done it that are could be equally true. Just not being able to sleep at night and he just drove in these areas. Right. Right. And that's per, that could be equally true as to the idea that he was a stalking to set up a, a quadruple homicide. Yeah. I, well, what we're doing is asking what we're doing is asking logical questions mm-hmm. rather than filling in the pieces we don't have. That's the difference between speculating and a hypothesis. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So we I'm enjoying we what we're doing. Jeff says a report from an analyst for the FBI dated 321-23 showed the analyst heavily relying on a video of a car heading in the wrong direction at the wrong time on Ridge Road. Translate this face. I don't know what you mean by translate. Yeah. Happened to only have one license plate. Maybe the skid marks in front of the house will help investigators. Yeah, just between the tires. Maybe they can take rubber. Samples. Yeah, but you 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 took sample you took pictures of tire samples and the guy drove twenty five hundred miles on those tires. Can you match them up? Maybe from the width and dip? maybe you can, but it's not conclusive at that point. That's what I'm saying. I don't see anything at this point that's conclusive. It's speculative. The police are saying that that's what it means, but in all fairness, it like I did with you last night. If you take Koberger as an individual and just look at him as a person, yeah. knowing what we know. You, there, there's nothing in his makeup, and, and actually, there's things in his makeup that suggest he wouldn't be genocidal, because right. he was a heroin addict, a drug addict, w- which I had pointed out last night is the act of suicide. Yes, and suicide people may, in fact, shoot or do things to get their drugs. Or okay, that that I understand, but suicide or people generally don't become genocidal people, right? That they're just if if they were genocidal, they probably wouldn't be uh, addicts and and doing the things addicts do. How many people are addicts that become serial killers? I don't know. I I personally don't remember that being. You a know what? I, you're you're right. You're right on all that. And talking right. about substance abuse, I mean that's my specialty. I I'm curious to find out if he truly did relapse. Maybe those were the twelve times that he was over there. Maybe he was scoring from somewhere. Because what better way to get some good drugs than to go to the campus? You know, you're going to get good shit, you know? Right. I mean, I'm curious to know when the trial comes if he relapsed, if he truly did right. relapse, you know? And that that would be, then, then you would have some, uh, over five-month period, he was found driving that uh, a similar route at similar time. Okay? Yes. So I mean, if, if there is a drug it? issue here, if there's a drug issue here, that's that will be an explanation we'll find out when we find out, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. Because that could be very feasible. Look, I relapsed. I, you know, I was going through a bad time, didn't know nobody. Um, antisocial as fuck, except for the people I chose to talk to. I got some I got turned on to some good shit. I couldn't stop it. Right. I've been over there. Hey, he did say the shopping is better in Moscow. You know, did he mean, here I go. (laughs) Did he mean that the drugs are better in Moscow? I mean, you never know how people, people slang is these days. You know what I mean? That could be a code, but it could not be a code. It could be nothing that 
the fucking Dairy Queen served a better burger than they do in Pullman. You know, it's really it's really obsolete, right? Yeah. Uh, and and when it comes to that report from an analyst dated 321-23, she's relating to a video that would be connected to the crime, the date of the crime, the time of the crime. So when she says that it was heading the wrong way at the wrong time on Ridge Road, she means the night of the crime. There's no other way to understand that. And the fact the report was finally given to her 321-23, right? We're, we're, that was months after the initial crime. Yes. So, so it months, is what I've months. said it is the whole time. That, that, that explains itself. I don't know why that needs to be deciphered. I, I, what needs to be deciphered there? The fact that he was going the wrong way? I don't know what no, but but to me this this is a fact that is actually supportive of Koberger in that he's right. So is that he, something is that something the defense is trying to use as a counter argument that this could not have been him because he was going the wrong way? Of course it is. Of course it is. They're saying that the car that the FBI analyst identified, he relied on a photograph, a video from Ridge Road. Okay. The, the crime didn't happen on Ridge Road, it happened on Queen Road. Right. Okay. So sure, that's that would be that would be an argument that it's not my guy. You got the wrong guy. You identified a car in that area. Now, like I said before, even if Kohlberg decides to admit that that was him driving, how does that hurt him? It establishes an alibi that I was driving around, and again, the police proved that because they they identified me at the wrong time at the wrong road. I believe if they're going to tear down this alibi, they're going to say, "Well, what kept you? You know what?" How do you know this area so well? If your phone was off, have you been here 12, 11 other times? How do you know this area so well? What were you doing at this time just driving He doesn't around? have to answer those questions. He's innocent. He doesn't have to? No, he's innocent until proven guilty. He's under no well, obligation I'm to explain saying once himself. he goes to trial. Once he goes to trial. No, even at trial, he doesn't need to explain himself. He doesn't need to get up there and tell you people what he was doing those 12 separate things. None of your business. This is America, man. Okay. That's the right to the, the right to the accused does not have to testify. Well, and you're not, just for the, just for, that, hey, I haven't read that part of the the, the oh, okay. court process. Yeah, I'm, not, my, my I'm a little intense, so I I got I got to calm down a little. <laughs> I was but just that, asking. I didn't know if he would he would be asked like that or how they would ask that question. No, here's here's how this will get understood. Ann Taylor will question the cast. She'll question the video analysis. She'll question the FBI automobile expert. And she'll establish that those facts do not place Brian Koberger at the scene of the crime. Their own facts will be the facts she uses to shoot down Brian Koberger's guilt. That's what I'm pointing out. Okay. And that was See, one I of the can dig, I can dig that. I, I don't know everything. You know what I'm saying? I right. don't, I, I'm pretty certain that, you know, I've seen, I've seen when they ask questions, it's open ended where there's only one answer, you know, right. they're, they're trying to show, the consistency of your your testimony versus you know there's holes in your testimony. Well, see, I want to say about these me. holes. You know, tell me about these times. Can I, or, see what Jeff H just said? What he say? Now, now, just just this. Just just read that quick, and then I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, it says I'm cool with BK enjoying driving around, but what about when he stopped driving for 13 minutes, right around the time of Zana's last sign of life? Okay, here, here's a question minutes. I have for you. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Other than Jeff saying that, where have you seen that factually placed for us to know that it's true? Where has it shown us that he stopped for 13 minutes? We know that he was not caught on his cell phone for more than two hours, or at least two hours from the before the crime and after the crime. There was no cell phone connection between him and the network. We also know that there were no pictures of him OK, until after the crime of his car. So in other words, Mr. Kohlberger was untrackable during this period of time. So where does Jeff come up with this idea that he has proof that Kohlberger parked for 13 minutes and that that particular parking time that he did was at the time of Zena's last sign of life? That's a BS statement. There's no evidence to support that. That's Jeff saying it. I don't know if. Um, no, there's no document to say that. That isn't the 13 minutes that you've spoke of whenever his phone comes on at Blaine. No. 
No, that's not. His phone goes on from 2:47 a.m. to 4:48 a.m. Okay. There is no statement in any document that's ever been placed in the news or anywhere that says Koberger's was tracked with it being parked for 13 minutes. There's nothing saying that they have a parked vehicle for 13 minutes. There's nothing saying they have a phone that, that was uh, off for 13 minutes and came back on. That whole statement is made up by Jeff. Where he comes up with that, I don't know. But I do know there well, is Jeff, a can you vehicle. answer that in the chat as, yeah. as um, little as you can with the... Let's see. It says the light bulb camera sees all that come into that dead end cul-de-sac of a neighborhood and all right. that leave yeah. and how long they stay. 13 minutes, in my opinion. Right. And then well, where are you car. getting the where are you getting the 13 minutes? I think is what he's, he's asking. claiming that the car in that neighborhood is Koberger's car. So his unwillingness to accept what the police told us as fact. He's conflated that to mean that that was Koberger's car, not just an 11 to 13 Elantra, and that that car stopped for 13 minutes, and that proves Koberger stopped for 13 minutes. So his so opinion is, this, is that... Is this, during the, is this during the last part of the crime, or is it during the no. crime? Is he saying the 13 minutes is, <laughs> is the 13 minutes it took to commit the crime? Is that what you're what saying? What he's saying is those 13 minutes are the 13 minutes in the Linda Lane video, that the, that the Elantra in the Linda Lane video is Brian Koberger, and that 13-minute time period is the time that car was there. That's what he's saying. That's how he's coming to this conclusion. So his difference of opinion on as to whether the that Koberger's car was on that street or not. That's where the difference of opinion comes in. All right. And I like how you worded that. Difference of opinion. I like that. Right. We all we we do have difference of opinion. We see the car drive by Linda Lane camera at yeah. 0730. And we, we see a car. car. We see we a car. car leave like a bank robber at 421.19. Right. Zana's last sign of life is 412. So so can I just show you something real quick? Can I sure. just show you? Look. Sure. Take, take that information and then go back to Ann's talk about Ridge Road. Ann Taylor and nobody has said that they identified Koberger's car on Ridge Road. The police have never said that, they, or, or I'm sorry. The police have never said they identified Brian Cobra's car in Linda Lane or Queen Road. They've never said that. Nobody has said that, except they imply it in that PCA. They claim that that's Koberger's car, but there's nothing that identified Koberger's car except for the images on Ridge Road. That's why I'm saying what Jeff is keeps sticking on is that being Koberger. It can't be Koberger because none of the information given shows it to be Koberger. It contradicts it. The police's own own paperwork contradicts that. Their own video, if that Linda Lane video is right, that get a clue is absolutely correct in his assessment of what those vehicles are. Well, I wouldn't defend or you know go the other way against Ann. I would just say though, in court, you are subject to perjury yeah. if you lie. You know, if you embellish evidence or whatever i mean i would say i would think that you would be charged with contempt or and i just something. say this this is kind of why i i kind of butt heads with this guy he's got he's always got to be like ann's words gospel i guess no it's not ann's words or gospel ann's words are the only available facts and until they're contradicted you have to accept them as that right that that's exactly what they did when they wrote up the warrant for the guy the judge accepted them as facts they threw his ass in jail right now we have to determine if the facts are accurate my point is when all you have is information, one, two, three, you have to accept it at face value, right? right. That's all you got. Does that mean it's never going to change? No. Does that mean that, that your interpretation of the faith can't be wrong? No. But it doesn't mean you need to, like, throw that nonsense out, like, and some kind of God in our eyes. That, that's got nothing to do with it. It's like a side chat slander that shouldn't even be spoken. Well, that's a good question, Jeff. I mean, I like how you worded that. You said you still don't understand what is meant by going the wrong way on Ridge Road. What do you mean by that? Well, I guess they were, if I was going to speculate, that they were meaning that the Elantra that was there during that time of the crime wouldn't have been going that direction. It would have been the other direction that they saw on the camera or wherever. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm no expert. Well, I, I suspect they're saying that there's a 14 to 16 Elantra, whether Brian's in it or not, heading away from the crime scene. And 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 that just can't be. Right? In other words, Why if that car is doing that, it can't be the one. Place in the, 
Was this placed in the PCA? I can't remember. It's getting late on my brain. No, I'm sorry. This was a <laughs> this was a motion she filed. This is a motion. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is what you're talking about. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I'm trying yeah, to understand. Right. It's like, okay, well, I've heard this before, but I can't remember where I heard it. You know, going the wrong way right. on Ridge Road. At that would mean way. that 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 car is going the wrong way to implicate it in the crime. Right. Right. I mean, if it was going the other direction during that time, well, how he's heading to the crime scene? I would possibly, but but if yeah. it's the wrong way at the wrong time, what if it's at at four o eight a.m. and they're saying the Elantra parked at four o seven and thirty seconds, right? So if it's going the wrong way at the wrong time, that implies that it wasn't in that neighborhood during the time of that crime. Well, like I said, like I said, Jeff, is that a one way street though? Is Ridge Road one way? Or is it no, a two way no, no, street? No, it's a neighborhood street. Well, I know it is, but is it one way? No, it's both ways. It goes in north, it goes in both directions. And okay. the, the only thing with it that's unusual is that it goes Walinta, Ridge, back to Walinta, and then, then it comes to a place where you got to get off. You got to turn right or left. Yeah. So yeah, that's a normal where he was, road. He was yeah. seen at the end of that road by that Exxon, supposedly, right? That's the car that they saw. That's not the Ridge Road area we're talking about. Ridge Road okay. is, is not far from the house from Queen Road. Ridge Road okay. and Walinta Drive are rel relatively in that area. So going the wrong way would implicate the car going away from the crime scene. Now, now, for, let's say the car on Ridge Road was seen driving away from the crime scene at 4.15 a.m. Well, you're claiming the car at the crime scene didn't leave to 4.20. You, you see what she's saying? She's trying to imply here? This yeah. car was going to, you identified an Elantra. 14 to 16 on Ridge Road the wrong way. Go head no head away from the house at the wrong time. What time could be wrong? It would have to be a time that was consistent with that PCA's argument of the time of the crime. Right. Right. I'm gonna pull and, up the map. I'm gonna pull up the map where it goes from Walenta yeah. right there and it heads into Ridge Road. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. pull up that map. Yeah. I know y'all probably seen this a hundred million times, but I want to, I want I'm a visual person. So I like to see stuff as you are talking about it. Excuse me if that right. that's kind of nerdy or whatever, but you know. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the map. Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Walenta, this is Walenta coming up from Queen Road is back here. Yeah. Okay. Taylor. Yeah. I'm, Taylor and all those yeah, roads. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're right there at the intersection. Walenta goes this way. So supposedly he made a left right here on Walenta heading towards Ridge Road. And what we see here is there's a house there. There's a house yeah, there. There's, there's a camera on a house somebody had already done all this. Yeah, this stuff. one, this one right here that's blurred out supposedly mm -hmm. is a now Ridge Road. Now yeah, this is the so camera it, that supposedly caught him coming up, Walenta, right. right here. Going the wrong way at the wrong time. Okay. So okay. if this is the house that caught him going the wrong way at the wrong time, so he's rounding this, this turn right here, and it goes back to Walenta. So this ridge road isn't very long. No, it's a, just a brief pause of a, of a road. You see that? Here's yeah. the turn. Here's the turn right here. And then it goes into Ridge Road. And, it's and I guess this is the house that determines that because it's off from the rest of the houses. And Perfect. then goes back to Walenta. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So so what I'm saying is they identified a 14 to 16 Elantra on that road at the wrong time. And when I'm and what I'm also saying is. When they identify the 11 to 13 and put out a bolo for, for their assistance, right? That they actually did identify the correct vehicle on Queen Road. There are two different car identifications here. Both of them are accurate. And this is so why... At I, that time of night, so at that time of night, they yeah. picked up his vehicle right here going yeah. the wrong way, which would have been this way. Yep. At the wrong time. So were the murders going on during that time? It may in fact be. Is that what they're saying? No, we don't know exactly what she's saying, but there's not okay. too many there's not too many ways that it could go. Right? Okay. Why why even bring that up? 
Unless right. it has some relevance to the crime. And the crime's biggest relevance, so everybody can agree, we can agree on these two points. It's the electronics and the time. Those are the key elements of the crime. And your elements of that crime, if they're found to be inaccurate, then provide reasonable doubt that the accused was not involved. If his car was here at 415, then you cannot conclude he's guilty because the police alleged the crime and the vehicle that was there drove away at 420. Yeah. This is what she's building, you see? That's why I said from the beginning, why I got involved was for every accusation the police have made, they've provided an explanation of reasonable doubt in everything they did. That makes sense. I mean, I don't think they did. I'm, it I'm pretty funny. sure. That, I'm pretty sure. Let's say that for just conversation value. Okay. Let's say they say um, he's driving the wrong way at the wrong time. Right. The wrong time would have been, let's say he left his house at 332 suppose, or 240, 240 something. Right. He got to Moscow around supposedly around three o'clock he drove then around he, then he turned his phone off at 257 or 252 a.m and it stayed off until 447 or 448 a.m okay so in your opinion and jeff you can type this too if you want and sabrina in your opinion what time would the time frame would have been that they caught him here going the wrong way if we're just for the sake of discussion what time would you say that would have been Yeah, I'm curious. I just want to know. No, he says not, he needs not to say anybody. Him. Not to say anybody's wrong or anybody's right. right. I just want, for the sake of discussion, what time do you think this wrong time was? No, just give me a time. If you can, you know, if he got to Moscow, it takes about what seven to eight minutes to get to no, Moscow eight. from. Huh? He won't entertain. He won't entertain things out of his belief. He believes what he sees, and that's fine. But it's hard to have a discussion because because they see it one way, and no matter what you show that could contradict that way, they'll never change their mind. Well, I'm that's not the trying to believe it. I'm not that, trying to contradict. I just want to know what people's perception is of that I know, statement. I know what you're doing. I know. Uh, wrong time, wrong way. So I'm trying to build something here. Okay. Supposedly it takes what eight minutes to get to uh, Moscow from Pullman. He supposedly went next to the police station, went all the way around. So let's say another. He left his house what two forty five, two thirty something. All right, Apparently, but what, what, what are you trying to sort out? When he would have went by here? Yes. What time was the wrong time that he went by here? Was it after the crime? Was it before the crime? Or during the crime. Or during the crime. Right? It, and it may not even have had to have been during the crime. You may have saw him at 4.06 a.m. And you can make the argument that the car that you guys are talking about parked at 4.07. It's not likely that he was able to turn around and go back there that quick. Or, or it could have been 4.09. So my point is, any time in connection with their actual written in stone timeline is a problem for the prosecution. Is that what she's referring to? I suspect so, but I have no no way to prove it at this point. But it's a senseless fact to bring up unless it has a bearing on the case at hand. And lawyers never ask questions they don't have answers to. Just be aware of that. Any well, decent what, lawyer. Yeah, that's why I'm asking this question is, you know, just to show, because it is relative. It is relative because they said the car was heading the wrong way at the wrong time. So if you're using your intellect, the wrong time could be either before the crime, during the crime, or after the crime. Based on the the, the proximity of the house, mm -hmm. would he have been there? We don't know this, but would he have been there in enough time to be going this direction after the crime was committed, during the crime was committed? Did they catch him on that camera? Let's say they caught him on that camera at 335. Okay. Well, that's Would way that have been a, right. Huh? 
That's way before the crime. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It would be meaningless so to would even point be, it out. That would be for the defense to say, well, look, our client was here at 335 heading the wrong way. Yeah, but that would be a meaningless point. I don't know that that would help you because there's, there's 35, you still got 25, so you got a half hour and two minutes to be able to get back to that house. See, here's what I, what I want to say about, a, a, and she's a decent lawyer. No lawyer will ask a question they don't know the answer to. They will not put a witness on the stand that asked them a, a random question. They just won't right, do it. Exactly. And when they file for documents, okay, and they're trying to build a case, you can kind of read what they're doing by what they're asking for and how they're asking for it. So you could actually, before the case ever goes to trial, have an understanding of the perspective of the defense's strategy, what they're going to do, what they're going to try to argue. And you can decipher that from their motions, right? That's your right. only window in there. And you generally can come up with a really good concept of what their argument is. That that's how I've come to where we're, I say the seeing, argument will, will be their own work is going to be turned against them by hand. We're seeing the sheets for the defense. Right. Chances are she's gonna try to disprove the fact that him driving the wrong way at the wrong time would place him anywhere near the proximity of the murders and the time frame that they occurred. Yes. It's, Jeff, what I, don't could think, it mean? I don't think Sarge would yell at you. Um, I think that this is just right, the way you. this is just the way people talk. We are just, you know, just having a discussion. You know, he's not he's not having to agree with everything I say because he's on my panel. You know, he's free to have his thoughts just like you have your thoughts when you're up here. You know, I believe that you know we're having an adult conversation, and that's what I'm trying to see here is. Based on this one statement, she would be advocating for his freedom because he's his car is shown heading the wrong. Supposedly, his car is heading the wrong direction at the wrong time. Right, and and I don't, I can't for the life of me, and I I would be willing to accept another reasonable explanation for the defense making that statement because it, it serves. No purpose except to suggest that Mr. Kohlberger couldn't have committed the crime at the Times and the PCA because of this picture. Do you There's mind no if you come, to use that? I'm going to bring Jeff up for a little bit. Is that all right, Sarge? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Or we could all actually, right. do you, are you going to stream it or you want to do it like just on StreamYard? I'm going to have him come up on panel. Oh, boy. Let's see. Here you go, Jeff. Here's the link. We will be respectful all the way around. So that, that's what I mean. When a lawyer asks a question and prepares for a defense where they're going to try a case, everything Ann has told us, tells us that it's the prosecution's own documents and their own case that she's going to use to exonerate her client. She's going to take the cast where she only has the summary. She'll show the inaccuracy of the cast, the inability to trace Mr. Koberger during that period of time. That'll that now you can't put him in the house. Then she'll show the video footage of cars, a car similar to Mr. Koberger's that the police already identified as an 11 to 13. And then she'll show you this and say, a car going the wrong way at the wrong time, which by the way is my client, and he could not have committed this crime. I suspect that's so, exactly how she's gonna do this. So the car that they saw going on this road was the the 15 to 16 right 14 to 16 14 to 16 yeah okay so that's building a case right there you know she's, it's a 14 she's using this photograph so it must mean something to her case right yes and the only thing it could mean because she's the defense attorney is to propose an argument that this shows he couldn't have been at the house when the crimes were committed there's no other reason to point this out or to go to use this photo it serves no purpose because this is just another photo of an Elantra in that neighborhood that they identified as 14 to 16. It's actually a bad thing for her client if this doesn't show him in a, in a light that says he couldn't have done that. Do you follow me? Yeah. You you would be hurting your client by bringing this up. You're just letting the public know there's more police footage of this guy in the neighborhood. And you're right. It's a two-way street because there's a car going yeah, yeah. that way. So the, his car would have been turning right there, coming up the, the hill right here. And that would have been a perfect shot. I mean, 
Yeah. If, if that camera is really clear coming up this hill, no matter Man. wherever this camera is, it would have captured. Right. Do you, do, you, do you understand how I come to the conclusion of what she was, what she's most likely going to do with this picture? Do you see how yes. I got to that? Yes. I, I consider how it would be unimportant. And then if so, the unimportance of it would be, it's just another photograph proving the police's case on location. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I do. And and the hey, fact well, that she's, yeah. she's treating it the other way tells me that what she's going to propose is this shows he couldn't have been at that house. All right. Welcome, Jeff. Hey, guys. Sorry it took so long. I got a new mic box, and I'm still getting used to it. That's all right. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I'm not too loud, am I? I can bring it down. No. Okay. I think we, I think we all talk a little loud. I, I don't really see that as, you know, getting angry or getting upset. I just think that's just how we talk. Yeah, no, and I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I know that this is a very passionate, uh, passionate case, you know, and I know Sarge and I, are, 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 there's certain issues that we're on different sides of things. And that's cool. We've had a, we had a long, you know, kind of a yeah. phone call kind of thing on what was it, discord, you know, and, you know, we've been, we've been, been through this. And so Sarge knows where I stand. I know where Sarge stands and it's cool. So what was, but I still, I, what was your question I, comment? Well, I still um, feel like that wording is very um, just confusing. He, he's going the wrong way. Who's to determine he's going the wrong way? It's kind of like in the Lord of the Rings where he tells the wizard, he's like, you're late. He's like, no, I'm never late. The wizard arrives when he intends to arrive. How do we know he's not going in the direction he intended to be going? Who's to determine it's well, the I wrong way? It's, it's kind of an easy thing to understand, though. Not for me. You tell me, Sarge. Tell me. Wait, wait. If you like the, that show, The Office, as if I were a child. Listen, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not rocket science. It's needed. The only wrong way is away from the house. No. Well, but if he if he's over here on Ridge Road going east in the wrong way, as as they are claiming, and he does a U turn right there and heads west, was he not going the wrong way? And then three seconds later, he's going the right way. But they wouldn't, wouldn't want to say that. They'd want to. They'd want to say Excuse just me. the part. Excuse that... me. Jeff. 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 You're it's you're, question, you're, though, creating, you you're creating a complete hypothetical that may not exist, and we won't know if it exists for a long time. And this is where you and I part ways. I don't accept anything beyond the fact. Anything. And what Ann fact, says is fact. Got you. No. Got you. No. 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 Yes. Yes. That's what it is. See, this is why I have a hard time talking to him. 12 I'm days. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a hard time because you're not understanding. It's so simple. The fact is there's a photograph. The information that we can confirm is the photograph shows a 14 to 16 Elantra going the wrong way at the wrong time. Where's this photograph okay. you're talking about? Finish. What do you mean? Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. That's the only facts right. we have. Whether they're right or wrong will be determined. But taking them as the only facts we have and addressing them for only what they're worth, they do say something. All by themselves. I don't need to add U-turns. I don't need to add parachutes. I don't need to add ladders, okay? But PCA I is less need... factual than Ann's words, is what you're saying. Ann's oh, words are factual. God. PCA words are less factual. It's got nothing to it do with Ann Taylor. It's got nothing to do that's with a, Ann But Taylor. that's her phrase, that he was going the wrong direction in but at the gotta, wrong time. And your problem is with Ann Taylor. I'm looking at the facts. I don't care who gave them to me. You're calling it facts because I'm that's saying it came got. from Ann Taylor. It came from Ann Taylor. She said the knife was placed. The knife sheath was placed. Come she on, that that, that that okay, okay, and, uh, okay, guys, you know. okay, okay. Sorry. This sorry. is this is this is what I want you to understand. Y'all are both saying the same thing, basically at a different variable. You're, you know, you're saying that he could have made a U-turn. Well, if he made a U-turn, he would have been seen on camera making the U-turn. There was only maybe one not. No, there. maybe not. Maybe not. I don't discredit his statement, but it isn't part of the discussion because we don't have evidence of a U-turn. Well, of course. Well, I'm just right? I'm just discussing it just to discuss, okay? So well, he, if he makes the U-turn, then he's he's didn't have the front license plate, he would have the back license plate. So therefore they would have seen the back license plate. Is that another part not of necessarily the though? It's hard Is to see not? license plate on uh night vision um cameras you know once they go into night mode the the the, the license but, plates glow like they're nuclear see here's here's where i where i i, I jump ship is that there's no reason to have a discussion about a u-turn because there's nobody has brought up a u-turn except us it's come up in here okay well forget the u-turn he's going the wrong speed 
What if they said that? How do you determine that? Maybe that's the speed he chose well, they, to go. They, they did. They did not say that, did they? But why? It's the same kind of phrase, isn't it? It's without well, let's, detail. No, well, let's stick to the let's stick to the phrase that was spoken. I know. The I mean, no, was, there's the no detail. Was, okay, but the car was going the wrong way at the wrong time. Their let's opinion. I think. Well, let's just stick to what those words mean. The wrong way at the wrong time. She is. She's trying to defend this client, and I understand people have their definitions of whether he's guilty or whether he's not. We we did a we did a video on that, Jeff. Remember? Yeah. You know? yeah. And um, it doesn't matter what people think, whether he's guilty or whether he's not, if you stick to the facts. You you know, we just stick to the facts. He was going the wrong way at the wrong time. So if he was going the wrong way, there's no way he could have committed this crime because it was the wrong time. I don't understand what, what the phrase means completely, so I can't say that to be honest. Well, I mean, that's no, you're my, what, do you, that. what do you mean? What do you mean by frozen stock phase? What do you mean by going the wrong way at the wrong he time? Finished, what does that let me mean? Finish. Jeff understands us explicitly. This guy understands everything. No, it is bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, and I don't microscopic, <laughs> and yet he decides to play this game with people. Yeah, this it's, is you it's, sound it's, like so many other YouTubers, Sergeant. They say, Yeah, let's I throw him under the bus. See, His like opinion, he must he must be FBI can, or you something. Can say no. whatever you want, Jeff. You could say whatever. Go back with your buddy John. But this here's is the just deal. what I'm saying you because know, this is what I believe. You know and you exactly can... what those three words mean. No okay, different than guys, if I were to okay, no, I don't. I don't, hey, Sergeant. Hey, we're gonna stick to that. Yeah, because I prefer not to talk to this jerk off. I really don't. Well, he is a total <laughs> jerk off in the way he does that. He plays this game. No, that you don't know I, I have an opinion you don't agree with, and you then hate he'll me go for on it. To What's explain the to you the, <laughs> He'll explain to you the intricacies <laughs> of a rocket orbit, and then pretend he doesn't know what three words look like. Jeff, get that line. All right, Ann Taylor's. Okay, I'm going to mute both of you for a second. Let you, let you catch your breath, because the reason I brought Jeff up was to hear his discussion. Whether we agree with it, whether we don't, you know, it's it just disruptive when we're going back and forth, and especially when we start calling names and things of that nature. But just kind of stick to what we, we're going with. For the sake of conversation, Jeff, if you don't understand it or if that's really your reality, we'll go with your reality. But at the same time, you have to be open to accept other people's opinions if they contradict with yours, you know that. So I will unmute you guys, but y'all can't talk over each other. Y'all have to listen to one another, even if you don't agree. We're all adults here. We're going to get to a common ground, which is whether we can see somebody else's side or whether we can't. You know, it's legal jargon. So a lot of times when they put stuff like this in there, it's placed in that paperwork so that it causes confusion like this one person might say yeah wrong time wrong way okay another person will say well what what the hell does that mean does that mean that the individual was you know is that your opinion that they were going the wrong way at the wrong time or is there supporting evidence that you have that we haven't been shown to support your statement so let's try to be respectful let's let's not name call whoever you know, I got you both on my panel tonight. It doesn't matter to me where you've been, what your previous exposures to other panels. It doesn't matter. Both of you are very intellectual in my eyes. So I know that I can conversate with both of you by yourselves. So we should be able to be smart enough to conversate together. We all have that capability. So I'm unmuting you. Can I get a yes or a no? I agree. I agree with you. Uh, Twelve gauge. Okay. Yeah, I'll so, give. I can give. I can give softer answers that turn away wrath, as the good book says. I, listen, I I have no interest in having the discussion. Let him speak, and when he's done, he's done. Okay. Uh, I've seen this before too. <laughs> yeah. Well, regardless, let's. let's... Well, actually, twelve gauge. Why don't you explain it to me as you understand it? Because you know, it's it's it can be me, might be me, or it might be the one who's trying to explain it and doesn't want to hear it through the ears of the person they're talking to. They're just like, "I said it. You should understand it. Get out of here, kid. You bother me." You know. So well, but if you can... um, Sarge and I have had a conversation. We had a conversation yesterday, and both of us have an, have a similar perception on evidence the way you and I have. So 
if you see it and it's told to you, then there's no interpretation for another avenue unless you create it. So if I tell you, Jeff, look, I saw you heading down, I don't know, I don't know a road in your county or whatever, but let's say I saw mm-hmm. you heading down on 13 at the wrong time of day. So there's no way that you could have been involved with that traffic accident that happened two blocks over. Because it's impossible to get the di- to travel the distance in the time to be there. Is that what you mean? No, the fact that your car was not on that road to be having that accident because you were heading in a different direction at the wrong time frame, meaning that that accident happened either during the time you were on that road, after the time you were on that road, or before the accident happened. There were three variations of you being at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's basically what she's saying. You're at the wrong place at the wrong time. There's no fucking way that you being on this road could have could have been the reason that this accident happened. Well, I, I guess I would wonder, this is an FBI analyst video that she's claiming that the FBI analyst used this video to come to a different conclusion, I imagine, than what Ann Taylor has come to by saying you're going the wrong direction at the wrong time. Would the, would the, would the FBI analyst agree with that? No, that you're misinterpreting the FBI's work. The FBI identified that vehicle, and that's all they did. They didn't identify, do anything more than give an identification. And what she is saying is the video the FBI relied upon to identify the 2014 to 2016 Elantra is from Ridge Road of a car going the wrong way at the wrong time. She isn't saying anything about them confirming it was Koberger or nothing. They're just, she's just pointing out that they relied on a photograph of Ridge Road. That particular photograph has got nothing to do with the crime. So let's reset. So they they saw a car, they saw a 14 to 16 Elantra going the wrong way at the wrong time. So we've, um, in the PCA, it says what? 407 to 417, 421, somewhere around there. Are we all in agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. So to say that they saw this Elantra during either during the crime or after the crime, I would be more based to think that that would be during or after. It wouldn't be before. It would be during or after the crime. Then this car is, there's no way that this car can be involved because it was going the wrong way during the time that these murders took place. No How about, can I read that sentence? Can I read that sentence from Ann just so we can reset? Sure, go ahead. A, a report from an analyst for the FBI dated 321-23 shows the analyst heavily relying on a video of a car heading in the wrong direction and at the wrong time on Ridge Road. Right. Okay, so so at, based on what I just said, either during or after the crime... This is my perception that this car is going the wrong way at the wrong time. There's no way that this car, 14 to 16, Elantra, could be the car that they've identified was seen on the Queen Road camera. Now, is there elsewhere in the in the comment from Ann? Does it say um, I'm I'm not going on any of that. I'm going based on what you just read. Based on what you just read. You asked me to, to give you my interpretation. I'm giving you my interpretation. Based on what you just read, my interpretation is there's no way that this car right here that was seen on Ridge Road heading the wrong way at the wrong time could be placed on Queen Road at the time of whatever it is that they're looking for as the a time frame. Whether it be the murder, whether it be before the murder, whether it be during the murders or after the murder, this car right here and so many words has been excluded right. from the scenario. That's what that basically what that says. This car is excluded because there's no way that whatever time frame they're 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 discussing, they didn't put whatever you know during, before, after, whatever. That's why it's so speculatory. But it's speculatory the- too because she's dancing a fine line on disclosing information that she has a gag order on. Yes, exactly. So when she files these motions, she's got to tap dance a little bit to get around that so that 
because nobody's saying anything about Brian Koberger didn't. Where's the media saying he didn't do it? Where's the media saying maybe the police did this wrong? Or maybe, maybe when all those CSI workers went inside with windbreakers and no protection against contaminating a scene, uh, maybe there's a problem with this collection of CSI. There's nobody saying anything on behalf of Koberger, right? So when this woman files a motion, she's not stupid. She runs the gambit and she crosses the lines there where she can. And when she says that they identified a vehicle going the wrong way at the wrong time, she's saying that the FBI's own work will exonerate my client. That, yeah. That's what I was saying earlier when I keep telling you, when Ann keeps arguing the alibi can only come through more discovery, when Ann said her alibi is going to be based on expert testimony, some of it from the prosecution, she's telling you that their cast, their video, their arguments of him stalking are, with their own work, provably wrong. That's her argument. It's very simple oh. what she's doing. So, Jeff, does that make sense a little more, or does it still clear as mud? <laughs> well, I mean, it's I, it seems to me that they're just trying to cast doubt on this FBI analyst. Of course. Because it sounds like it's one report. It's a report from an analyst for the That's FBI dated need. 321. Shows the analyst, and here's some very clever, uh, interesting words. Shows the analyst heavily relying on a video. Not completely right. relying on it. You know, heavily okay. relying on a, on a right. video of a car headed, in their opinion, in the wrong direction, in their opinion, at the wrong time. That's all right. up to them as to how they determine what they believe is the wrong time in the wrong direction. Okay. I mean, that's uh, a small little neighborhood. You can do a U-turn and go east and then you can go west within, min understand. you know, less than minutes. I understand. There, what there's saying. no doubt that you're right on that argument. But what we're pointing out is there is no evidence that that happened. With right. this particular car, with this particular analyst, with this particular statement. That's all we're pointing we're out all here. Visual. We're all visual. Somehow, somehow you think that makes us and fans, when in fact all we're saying is those are the facts we have available. And if we try to make sense of them, the only sensible reason a defense attorney would bring this car up, because by bringing up another image of his car in that neighborhood will hurt Brian. It won't help him. So why would she bring this up and then make well, I mean, statement? Come on, it's a Jeff. statement I mean, that's it's a sense. statement that's going to call into question. Do you believe the FBI analyst or do you believe Ann? That's as simple as no, that. It's going to be the, she's going to tell you, believe, believe what you're seeing. The FBI analyst is completely correct. That is a 14 to 16 Elantra. That is Brian in that car. You watch what she claims because the FBI analyst identifies that car. OK, and relied heavily upon it. If she can establish that was her client in that car and that particular time going the wrong way. During the time of the crime, Jeff, it's over. But look at this. See, you're, not, you're not, guys, you're not you're really are following what we're showing you. You are, just basically, you are basically saying almost the same thing. But look at this, Jeff. Here's the house right here. It's not blurred. Mm -hmm. Here's the circular driveway. Right. Here's the old Queen or King Road house. So at this time, when this camera caught this car heading the wrong way at the wrong time, that means somewhere else... On footage, they have to have had the other Elantra or another car that they feel is the murderer's car, which would have been what the 13 or the 11 to the 13. Correct. No. So they would have had. I'm theorizing here, okay, or mm -hmm. hypothesis. No, you're 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 interpreting the facts. You're just interpreting it differently than people have actually looked at them. Okay, so what I'm saying is. This car right here that they saw going the wrong way at the wrong time. Right. Supposedly, there's going to be another freaking Elantra going it over here. 407 AM. 407 yeah, and 30 seconds. Right here. Elantra parks over in that area. Yeah. The one that you showed, Jeff. The one that you showed on your video. That right. Elantra. They're, they're, they're going to claim with the Ridge Road that the, the 14 to 16 is Brian Kohlberger. And that I guarantee you the time that they're going to argue that, they, that FBI analyst decided that that car was at is going to be during the time of the crime. Well, right. how do we know, though? How do we know, that though? Car, that we car we don't, happen. but it's the most logical argument. With no, I didn't finish my sentence. I didn't finish right? my sentence. How do we know, though, that they don't have video of the car going east on Walenta, and they know that in order to get back into the Queen Road area takes a certain amount of time? And had he been continuing east, he wouldn't have made it back in time. But if he did True. a U-turn right there and then headed west, he would end up back in time. So but they're not going to. 
Four oh six a.m. That gives them a minute. We don't know the time. Why are you saying times when we don't know the times? That because they didn't say the times on Ridge Road. They said just wrong direction, wrong time. Wrong way, wrong time. time. But they said over here. You didn't hear my my example at all. I don't think. He did. I I believe that your example is this right here. Instead of going this way where they say wrong time, wrong way, he busted a U and came back. Right, and got there in time to be caught on but, camera. But at what time do you speculate he was seen on camera? Right here. Well, he's. Right here? But I, I mean, that's all that? speculation because he's. But, I believe he's seen on camera five times. But go with an educated guess. You're a smart man. It Jeff. could be. It could be. They could be referring to any one of those five times that he's seen in that area. Okay, so based on what you're saying, if he, if they're saying wrong way, wrong time, then they would have seen him turn around in this. Because this is the house with the camera, so this camera. Well, assuming it's, we assume it's got a camera only because well, it says video. There, there's a camera somewhere on Ridge Road. Yeah, there's imagine, somewhere based on that state. There's only a couple of houses there that could get the image. Yeah, but there's only it starts right here and it ends right here before it right. goes. So it's to real short. Yeah, Valenta. So it's one of these houses that caught this car. If it Three wasn't this right? one, if it wasn't this one, then it could have been this one. So he could have busted a UE right there. He could have busted a UE at the next driveway. But yeah, or in just, the middle of Ridge Road. In the middle right. of Ridge Road. Who gives a fuck? It he was could have white. turned around yeah. anywhere. Yeah. It was but what I'm saying is if he continued going east, he'd never make it back in time. But no, if he if he pulled a the UE, he would be going the other direction and make it in time. But if you what only works? talk about the first part where he's headed east, then then you can make a statement like that. He's going the wrong but direction not, at the but right she's time. Not gonna, but, but you're, but you're, she's you're, not going to say... She's not going to say the rest of what you said because no, she wouldn't that even would say put the first her part. client. That would put her client going and heading to do no. the murders. That's what. You, but that's listen, what the whole statement that we're reviewing wouldn't exist if there was video evidence showing that he did a U-turn and headed back towards the crime scene. There's no way that lawyer, I don't care if her name is Barney Fife, would put this particular thing in writing to a court placing her her client right there knowing that there's another video of him doing a u-turn going back the other way there's no lawyer on the face of the earth that could be that well there there is the guy that did the kansas city there is a lawyer on earth that would do that but i don't suspect it's the public defender named ann taylor okay well i mean she's convinced a juror named sergeant friday so i mean she oh, knows I what she's doing I I think 12 Gage is laughing because he sees the sense in what I'm saying, don't you? It's I'm pure common because sense. Of the name that you gave the lawyer, I was thinking Thaddeus from uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Isn't that his name? Mm. No, what was that lawyer in the Kansas City that kept telling a different story about the guy that survived? Oh, yeah, he, yeah he, was a, he was shady. He was shady. Imagine that guy being, you wouldn't even want him to close a real estate deal. Jeff, Hell no. Hey, Jeff, what we're all saying is, you know, what you're saying is, if you were going to say that your client was guilty, let's say you're the defense lawyer, okay? Mm -hmm. Would you bring up this other argument that he could have busted a UE and and gone that direction if you were trying to defend him and not would give him the death penalty? Or would you say, hey, my client's going the wrong way at the wrong time. There's no fucking way that you can say that that's my client's car because he's on another road Far away from the crime scene. There's no way that y'all don't even have him on video on that street because yeah, it's a yeah. different it's, car. It's a different it's common car. sense, Paul Gage. That, that attorney would never have brought this point up. And I, I think Jeff can concede that point if he calms down. No. There's no, no Sarge, just, just allow me to believe what I believe. I have never uh, met somebody that is like, I, you cannot I, believe that, Jeff. I don't, you are not allowed to I, believe what you that, believe, it's Jeff. Not that I don't believe in information. I believe in fact. I don't believe in fact even. I take the facts as they are and accept them to be what they are. Well, and they I'm, can all change. I'm saying is I'm... Listen, they can change. If there's a video that shows a U-turn, they can change. But until a video that shows a U-turn exists, that conversation is moot. It doesn't Let's apply to the same. Hey, hey okay? you, are well, both, you are both able to believe what you want to believe. I want to. I don't believe something. it. I just read it. I just don't I wanna, criticize him for his. I mean. <laughs> hey, I want to bring up something. I want y'all to look at the map, okay? Just out of different yeah. conversation. How easy would it have been had this road right here kept going through this area right here? Yeah, there wouldn't yeah. have been a house there or this road right here 
instead of building this damn house at the end and closing it off, they would have just came all the way. The killer could have went up Walenta around like this, done the crime, parked right there, and hauled ass and never been seen. Right, but but they did that. To stop, <laughs> they they did that to stop that neighborhood from being a shortcut from people on Walenta from yeah. cutting through. Right. Yeah, but I mean, if it would have been that way, the Ridge Road would have caught. I mean, my whole thing right. in this whole case is there's a lot of video evidence that we haven't seen. There's a lot of things that we have not been pertinent to because of the fucking gag order. Right. If they would have never put the gag order, we would have been able to see exactly what they saw on Ridge Road. They would have put out there, hey, this is the image that, or this is the video that the FBI agent was addressing. We would have seen right. whether he was coming. And this is the time that, it, that he looked. This is the time that car yeah. was there based on his assessment, right? And he would have been guilty in the public eye way before our theories or speculation or whatever. He, he would have been guilty in the public eye. Maybe the gag order was to give this client a fair trial, honestly, like they've said. They want a fair trial because they want the facts to speak for themselves rather than the visual evidence until it's time to show it. Yeah, because I, there's going to be people that are still going to say that. He was on Ridge Road, but what if he busted a U-turn? They didn't show so that. What do, you, what do you think they mean if you were to, could, could add more detail? Do you believe that they think he was going east, which would be kind of going to the right, east on Ridge Road? Yes. That's in that. So east, east we, we defined east as the wrong direction. Yes. So now I look, if you, if you zoom out and look at the bottom of the map, what if he made a right turn at Chinook? See, Chinook Street the is the very next street. Well, of course, but they didn't say that in the wherever, the PCA or whatever. They said he went all the way down to Walenta, down to Paradise, Paradise Road, all the way until he hit, what, 90, 98 or whatever, this area, Palouse. So maybe now, he is, he's making a guess, though, way. and he says it in the PCA. Hey, look at this, hey, look at this yeah. one. This is what the whole case is making us look like. <laughs> good one good one without balls <laughs> yeah without balls <laughs> so here's what he says in the PCA so three passes by King Road residence and then leave via Walenta Drive now here's where it sounds like he's just making a guess based off of my experience as a patrol officer this is a residential neighborhood with a very limited number of vehicles that travel in the area during uh, the early morning. Upon review of the video, there are only a few cars that enter and exit this. No, wait, that's not the thing I was thinking of. He, I think I think he makes a guess of which way he exited the, the whole neighborhood. Right, because they lose them on camera now. They don't pick them up on camera now. Yeah, that's so, the problem. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I believe that suspect vehicle one likely exited the neighborhood at Palouse River Drive and Conestoga Drive. P Palouse River Drive right here. is at the southern edge of Moscow and proceeds into Whitman County, Washington. Eventually, leads the road. Eventually, the road leads to Pullman, Washington. So he's saying that he went down Walenta, down Paradise, and then this way. Let me see. Let me read it again. Uh, and, it, and it sent him back home, but they didn't. He didn't go back home. Apparently, he went somewhere else, and he, they was found on a camera the seven hundred block of Indian Hills. <laughs> Right. right. Okay. Came back on hours later. Well, no, Indian Hills, Indian Hills, I think was before the murders. That's a, uh, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I don't but his his big his big uh his big U shaped drive that would okay. cause okay. him to appear to come from the west on cameras in his neighborhood, which is what I believe was was the reason he did that. That was a yeah. That was later. <laughs> he went down Dick Drive. <laughs> <laughs> And then he, he ended dicked. up on gay and <laughs> did you? He actually, he actually got dicked. <laughs> that was the other he went case. Down street and ended up at Gay Street. And now he's been dicked. <laughs> Poor bastard. I hope I don't get flagged for that. And shit. all he was doing was going out for a ride to get some hair on. I have to bring some humor into it, guys. It's too serious. You know what I mean? It's it's just it's a lot. It's a lot. And you're right to be questioning what you question. Your thoughts are valid, you know. 
But to a lot of people, when you hear certain things like that, you're like, well, are they just playing the devil's advocate or they really don't understand it? I could see both ways. But you know what? None of us really are prevalent to all the information. So our intellect has to tell us certain things. Like your intellect would say, okay, he could have busted a U there. He could have busted here. But they didn't say that. But that's just speculation trying to make sense of what they mean by what they said. Of course. Of well, course. Of course. The phrase is just without detail. It's without clarity. But like I said, like I said, and you know, my word's not law. Wrong time, wrong way. This would tell yeah, me that this car, this car from year 11 or 15, ah, fuck, 13 to 14. To 16, yeah, 13 to 14. 13 to 16 here. there, buddy. 13 to 16 was going the wrong way. Okay, that's telling me in my mind Okay, there's no way this fucking car could have done it. Yeah, so and can I just say that the, the argument about what time she's referring to is is to me there's can only be one time. Well, I no. mean, we're talking about that? a crime with a specific wait, we're talking about a crime that has a very specific timeline. So when she says the wrong way at the wrong time, she can't be talking about next Tuesday or two o'clock the following day or four o'clock that next. You know what I'm saying? She's saying the wrong way at the wrong time. She's referring to something at, at a specific time. And she's representing a guy that supposedly killed someone from 4.07.30 and was out of the house and driving away by 4.20. That's her client. So when that woman says the wrong time, what other time could she be referring to? I, I don't get it. The car goes by five times. It could be any one of those five times. Well, no, that, no, no crime happened the first four times. Right, but right. if she's saying the FBI analyst is is relying heavily on video that he saw, <laughs> I mean the right. same thing is what I did I with the gas this. station. This, you know the gas station, uh, the gas station photo that was circulating. That was at three forty five a.m. according to the computer screen that the woman took the picture of, and okay. I was certain I could debunk that by looking at the timestamps on Linda Lane, saying, well, you can't be in two places at one time, so let's see what was happening. Is there enough time to get to that gas station and get back and still be seen on Linda Lane camera five times? And damn, if it's possible. It's completely possible with a, a few minutes to spare. So I couldn't debunk it because, you know, I was trying to to, to make the statement that there. Story, that this story, car is that the wrong the time. With the cell phone? You mean that one with the cell phone out a window? That picture? No, that cell phone is taking a picture of a monitor, Sergeant Friday. A computer monitor. monitor. Whatever it is. Whatever There's it is. two pictures. There's a picture of, of the play and the rewind and the fast forward okay. buttons. Well, let me ask you all well. this, Jeff. You have a good point there. Let me ask you because I'm building on what you're saying. Okay, this wrong car at the wrong time. Could this car have made it to that Exxon by 345? If so, the murder supposedly didn't happen. I, I believe the reasoning that they're building all this is to debunk the timeline. The I believe that they're debunking the timeline based on the murders happening earlier in the night rather than later. Because in the PCA, it stated that, I mean, in the very beginning, they said three to four. Remember that? They were saying three to four. The coroner was saying somewhere early in the night. Okay, so that would have been two to four. So I believe that they're saying this to debunk the timeline. Because if he was supposedly, if his car was going the wrong way at the wrong time, was he just getting into town? Or was he leaving town before the murder happened? If they're going with the 407 narrative, then if he was leaving town earlier than 407, there's no fucking way he could have done it. If he was leaving town before or um, between 2 and 4 o'clock and he didn't leave his house till 2.42, there's no way he could have fucking done it. That's not me saying he couldn't have done it. That's speculating the attorney's reasoning behind this whole thing. Does that right, because he's not driving a DeLorean. <laughs> we all understand. Does that make yeah, sense he's not a time machine. All? Does that make sense at all, Sergeant Friday? Yeah, listen, the, the def I've been in so many court cases and defended myself, and you just don't put things out there that can be used against you, even if they could only possible. It's like why you don't put your client on the stand. So when an attorney makes a filing, they're not going to file and make a sensational headline with their filing um, in this kind of a horrific case. This isn't like a political case like Donald Trump arguing in Georgia or something. 
this is a serious issue. So the lawyers involved, when when Ann asks for information or makes a clarifying point with that FBI agent and mentions time and place, and you're they're still asking them for an alibi, and their argument is my alibi is dependent upon the discovery, right? You have to realize what she's arguing. It's clear. Does that mean there's no video of a U-turn? No, it doesn't mean that. All I'm saying is that until that appears, we have to take what's in front of us. And her argument, and as far as I can see, and may, maybe you'll agree, 12 Gage, if what she's saying in that is what we're, we're understanding or we, we've de deduced, then that's a strong argument to make in court for Brian Koberger. That well, this car yeah, on Ridge Road we're going doing a long right way now. at the wrong time. Proves what he we're wasn't doing there. right now is talking about the defensive right. side of it. We're not talking about prosecution, so we're talking about one side. So therefore, it's going to sound one-sided. He was yeah. out driving around. Okay, that's his alibi. And then the FBI agent says he caught video of him going the wrong way at the wrong time. Okay, there's another piece of the puzzle. So he's out driving around. We're admitting he's out driving around, but he's in the wrong fucking place at the wrong time. So there's no way that his car could have been the car that was seen. Whether that's true, whether that's not. Right. She's going to yeah. argue that. That's her position. Yeah, she's going to argue it because that's trying to get her client off murder charges. Does that and make maybe sense? The, maybe the reason I see it the way I see it is because of the exercise I went through with the gas station. If you kind of for a moment call me an FBI analyst and I'm saying there's no way that gas station car is the one that we see on Linda Lane, it couldn't be in two places at one time. Lo and behold, I was wrong. People can be wrong. And I think um, I yeah. think in this case, Ann Taylor is wrong and the FBI analyst is right. That's Although that's I can't even I can't even say that because I don't even understand what Ann Taylor no, she's detail not wise is saying. <laughs> Jeff, because you missed the point. She's not gonna argue that he is wrong. That that's the whole point that you're missing. Ann Taylor's argument is that this man's identification is completely accurate. I agree with no, it. No, but she's saying the FBI analyst is incorrect because the car is going the wrong way, whatever she that doesn't means, use the at word the wrong incorrect. time. She says the, the FBI analyst depends on a heavily on a video of a car going. She never says he's incorrect. That's what you're well, missing. That's her, you're, I don't but know. that's her opinion, that the car is headed in the wrong direction at the wrong time. Well, if you Anal analyst, video, you think if she saw that, that video, then she knows that it's heading the wrong way at the wrong time. Right, but she probably. She's what if you see? That he had, what if you see the car? That that, that How car do you determine is, it's the wrong time, though? That's the wrong time that she wants him to be there. Like, would you want your client to be? Let's say, okay, he's heading the wrong way, but it was the right fucking time. That, right, because you know, she, she a, wants a jury to four, think it was four seventeen or four twenty-five. That would have given him perfect amount of time to get yeah, to it's... that spot. Even though it's the wrong car years, it's still putting reasonable doubt that he could have been the killer. The only thing I can figure is that she has calculated that had he continued easterly direction, he wouldn't make it back in time to be seen on the other camera that he's seen on. But well, that doesn't I, I take into account. With, that's I assuming which go, direction he went, which yeah, what road he took. But, but wait, theory. you're also you're eliminating the fact that her argument may in fact be at the wrong place at the wrong time means during the time that you outlined in the PCA. You're completely disallowing that. Well, she doesn't mention the time, though, so we we don't know. She wouldn't. She wouldn't necessarily have to mention the exact time. You know what's she's interesting, though, about the for discovery. Listen, she's filing a motion for discovery where all of this stuff is still incomplete. The video, she said, she's still waiting for. They're trying to collate the sound. You just saw her in court. His alibi depends on their discovery. That's exactly what she's doing. And in this particular argument that she's putting forward. She's clearly saying that this car was in the wrong place, going the wrong way at the wrong time. Therefore, that FBI agent identified the right car. We agree with him. He is my alibi. That's why Brian Koberger isn't going to call witnesses for alibis. He's going to use the police themselves as his alibi. Yes, I drove in that area. They said 12 times. It could have been more. I drove in that area constantly. He's going to admit to that because that's... So you're saying that... You're saying the FBI analyst would agree with Ann and say, "Yep, you're right. Yep, I made a mistake." It's a, my, no, it's no, a, he's going to say he's going the wrong way, the wrong direction. No, he's yeah, going to say that the, the car time. in that photo, that car in that photo, is correct. I identified that car. That's the correct time. She's going to show the car going east or in the wrong direction, and then she's going to show the time that the, the FBI identified the car would mean that car couldn't have been at the crime scene. That's going to be just, her argument. 
could me, only know me, it's going in the wrong direction. Little, let me give you another little piece of work here. Oh, and those 12 other times, okay, this individual, whoever it is, whoever the murderer is, but let's say Brian, for the sake of he's the one that's in jail right now for it, due to his pattern of living, he seemed very methodical. He seemed very perfectionistic. He seemed very... Um, repetitive. Yeah, repetitive. So if he's seen there 12 other times, are they going to see him 11 times out of those, or 12 times out of 12 times on that fucking camera right there? I don't going know. that direction during that time frame? If yeah. any of those times match up with whatever time they're trying to match it up to, see, she's trying to defend it. So I'm going to prosecution side right now. So I'm going, okay, well, these 12 times he'd been seen in that road at this time, okay, from 407 to 423, four of those times of those 12. Not saying that they're going to do that, but if that's the road that they're willing to take, then she's going to go counter that and be like, well, this particular time, that was the wrong car. You are looking for the 11 to the 13. So that's the wrong time. I'm not saying that he hasn't been there. I'm just saying that that particular night, he was going the wrong way at the wrong time in the wrong car. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. She's going to use their own accusations against them and their own evidence because Brian Koberger was driving around. They've already admitted to that. And that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm deciphering what she's doing because of the events as they've taken place. Okay. When, when they, when I read the people, when I was told that when we first find out that he was driving around twelve times, you can go back to Dago Stream, I think it was, and I said instantly, "That's his alibi." Mr. Koberger's alibi is that he was driving around at night, and he constantly drove around at night for the five months he was there. That's a normal behavior for Koberger. And in fact, what did he come forward to say months later? That that is his alibi. I, I was driving around. It wasn't okay, a surprise to me because because that's the only way he could fight this case, Jeff. Is by some of the things I'm pointing out to you. There's no other way to fight it. Whether he did it or not, this is how he's going to fight this case. Well, are we clear to kind of lay this horse to rest for a little bit? Because we're beating the shit out of it. How yeah. about you? Well, you said you said 12 gauge. You said methodical. You know, one thing I'm noticing of the times that the he, the car goes past the Lynn Lane camera, 3.30, 10 minutes later, 9 minutes later, 3.39. Then 3.56, yeah. 9 minutes later, again, 4.05. An and then four oh, and then and then four oh seven, coming through at a much faster speed, like adrenaline's kicked in, and I've decided I'm going to do this, this this thing. I'm cutting through this parking lot that I've just gone through four times, but I'm I'm going at a fast speed because this is now the time to do it. And the thing is, is it's when we can see that when we finally get to see that Linda Lane or uh, light bulb camera, we'll see the car come in, and then we'll see that it stays in there, does not leave, but when it does. 421 19 a.m. It's leaving like it just robbed a bank. And it's that's right around uh, the time, you know, Xana's last sign of life. It's like, is it any wonder the police wanted to talk to the occupants of this Hyundai Elantra? I mean, okay. it's like you were right there, right at the time, and you were acting, you know, you didn't tell the public that you were acting very strange how you drove, you drove kind of slow the other times. You even did a U-turn at the back and thankfully gave us a great side view of the window that shows that you know you're either an elantra or you're a tesla that's been squashed in the top based on my opinions of doing BMW the overlay or prius or focus or yeah there's okay. five body there's five body styles that mimic that from uh hey well okay. not the side windows though yeah i'm yes, gonna go with i'm gonna go with that i'm gonna follow you with that okay so he's hauling ass at what'd you say 425 so, uh, 421.19. Four, 421.19. He's hauling ass out of there. So, he's he goes down Walenta. He goes to the, to the left or to the right on the map. And he's caught on that, on that camera. Would that be the wrong time? Because it's the wrong car? Or is it the wrong time? Because maybe... There was another car seen. Well, the interesting thing is that the, I think the PCA came out before the Linda Lane footage was leaked, right? If I remember right. So the Linda Lane footage could have easily 
shown that the PCA was full of crap with their timestamps, but it corroborates the timestamps in the PCA. The, the car is, is mentioned on, in the PCA 329. On Linda Lane, it's 330. Um, I, be I believe it's this. I believe 404 this. on the PCA, and then it's 405 on Linda Lane. Right. I mean, it's right. just a, it's a minute later. They could the this could have the what I'm saying is that the the Linda Lane footage could have shown everybody these cops are lying. They placed the knife sheet. This is this PCA is crap. These times are made up. That's where I'm going with this. Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't think I'm, I'm going with that. this. I'm going with this in a different area. Okay. Okay. I believe that when the cops said 11 to 13. They got it right. It's on. It's not only okay. That car they found in Washington. What year was that? The that one was that was crashed. The, the one that was smashed. Yeah, I think that was a thirteen. Yeah. Okay. So, Let me check. so once they once they found that car, everybody was like, "Oh hell, they found the car. They found the car." Everybody was up in arms about finding the car. Not only in, until they did that video of him being pulled over by the female cop that people start saying, Hey, that's not an 11 to 13. That's a, that's a newer model. That's a newer model. So all of a sudden people start doubting the cops and saying that the cops got it wrong. Right. Why? Because they wanted to put that this car was the car. Right. They didn't want to hear anything else. They didn't want to hear, okay, the 11 to 13 was the correct year because that's what was seen on the camera. That's what the police said. No, they wanted to see, they wanted in their mind to this plus this equals this. So this time frame plus this car equals Coburger. Right. And people they have been pushing that narrative forever now. They, they've been putting all kinds of stuff. The MPD's corrupt. The Brady Giglio. All this stuff. They've been pushing a narrative that the police planted the sheath. They've yeah, been pushing a narrative that this happened and that happened. That it must have been a conspiracy, an inside job to frame Mr. Covert because he found something in the computers at, at, the, at the MPD that they didn't want him to find. So therefore they wanted to set him up. He argued with a professor, so the professor must have had beef with him. So he helped set him up. The delivery driver, grower, goer, or whatever. Well, we none of us up. believe any of that. I don't. I don't suspect. I definitely don't believe any of that stuff. I don't either. I'm putting all this together for you. I'm giving you the puzzle pieces. Goer, or grower, he was the delivery driver, so or the rideshare driver. So he definitely gave him Koberger's name. So therefore. There's another puzzle piece that shows he's guilty. While all this is going on, people are not focusing on the facts. The facts that the police have given, the motions, this, that, and the other. I'm not one-sided or the other. I can't really make up my mind because my mind doesn't work like that. As a therapist, I'm objective to everything that I hear. So I can see your point. I can see your point. And at the end of the day, I put everything together. I hate that fucking statement. I don't know why I said that. At the end of everything, um, I put the evidence in front of me and I make my own decision based on my intellect, on what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. And at this point, I see both of your cases. I really do. I believe that they caught the wrong car at the wrong time because that was Koberger. I believe that the car that they saw on Queen Road on the light bulb cam was also an Elantra, or it was a different style car and they got it wrong. But chances are they didn't get it wrong. Chances are that was an Elantra from 1113. Was the car that they found in Washington wrecked? Was that the potential car? Could have been. Another thing, Koberger's car didn't have tinted windows. The car that they found, that they saw as an example on the Exxon cam, had tinted windows, supposedly. I'm not going on based on what I'm speculating I see. I'm going on what I see in the picture. And those windows are dark. I know the difference between tinted windows and not tinted windows, even at nighttime. 
So do you get what I'm saying here? Is this clear as mud? Yeah. And actually, it, it, it definitely is a 2013 they found in, in uh, Oregon. I just checked the VIN number and updated my notes. I can't believe I didn't put that in the notes. You know um, what I think happened here? I don't think that there's any any intentional nefarious act on an agency during the, the leading up to that arrest. I think the problem we are having now is, in all fairness, if Ann's arguments and motions as we're seeing them, if that case holds water, then they should let this kid go. If it doesn't hold water, if they have evidence to contradict just the motions and the data that we've seen, just that, then then lock this kid up for life. I highly suspect, though, that everything I've watched her do is consistent with, with going to use the police own information against the police. Police do get it wrong sometimes. It doesn't mean they're they're criminal. CSI workers get it wrong sometimes. Labs do sometimes. There's just 3,000 DNA samples up in Colorado are being all withdrawn and withdrawn. My point is, the time will, will fetter out what's right or wrong. I, I just don't want to make assumptions that he's innocent by, by saying, I know he drove that way. I don't know he continued down Ridge Road. I don't know the exact answer, but what I do suspect, based on her filings and the facts we have, that everything she's putting together is consistent with what the host is saying, that it's likely this kid didn't do this, and this evidence that she's going to argue with is going to be their own stuff that they misinterpreted how many people have gone to jail and misinterpreted evidence it doesn't mean the cops were trying to railroad the guy you get tunnel vision there's a lot of things that go along with being a police officer and dealing with the public and sometimes tunnel vision is the worst thing that could happen to a cop and they just think that this case against Kohlberger was strong and they were going to prosecute it and they ran with it and now look this kid's going to sit in jail for three years at least to figure it out and if they figure it out and this turns out to be the truth there's no repercussions for Goldberger. and who solves the murder for these four kids if what ann is arguing actually turns out to be true what a tragedy that's going to be yeah you know also there was a creator that or maybe it was a TikTok that i saw um this lady was talking and she was saying well you know what I, i've been thinking about this what if there was two vehicles? What if, I mean, this is just what I heard. I'm not putting this out there as what I think. But what if they swap vehicles? What if the 11 to 13 really was Koberger and they swap to the 14 or 13 to 15? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you then know, you, would have another, mean, you would have another, you'd have another party in, involved here. Of course. But but, why would your friend let you use his car to, to track him down? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just asking a sensible question. I hope it is sensible. I don't mean to insult you. And that, that's why I'm asking these questions yeah. because, you know, when you say them out, out loud, yeah. then you have more questions, you know, right. questions that can't be answered. But when that statement is made, it sounds like, okay, that's logical. What if we did switch cars? And the car that we do see on Queen Road camera, 11 to 13, that would have been a guy that drove up there and knows that little time frame that he goes off camera. He's he's switching vehicles with another guy. He gets the keys in the tree line. He could always thought, and this is weird. This is just funny to me. Yeah, but just just think this house right here. Huh, look, what if he parked the car right here? Somebody from this house walked through the street line, gave him the keys to the other Elantra. He Wait, we don't see your mouse for some reason, uh, 12 gauge. Yeah, well, that's okay, but this is 12 gauge. Uh, what, what are you drinking? There brother? it is. There you're, it is. You're not I see it now. This, this, this Think here. about this. Who who in your right mind is going to let you trade cars of the same look? They, all, they both look the same to begin with, right? So you're going to swap cars with someone else and then go commit a crime and give them back their car? Who's yeah. going to let you do that? Hey, I'm going to be driving their car with the evidence in it. You're going to oh. give me the clean car that has no evidence in it. Yeah, but You're I mean, for now, now you've got another doer in this crime. Hey, and at the same time, I'm going to put a mask on. I yeah. got bushy eyebrows. You got bushy eyebrows. No, I don't. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? You get yeah. how that sounds when people start to. I mean, if I wanted to, I could push that narrative. And I've had, I would have hundreds of thousands of followers, but I'm not pushing that. Narrative I started, a, a, 
There's nothing to support it. I, I was on Cluminati's and I started the debate and I went all in that Brian Koberger is gay and he did not stalk those girls. Okay. And I started this in that in that, <laughs> that room went wild. The host and her, her husband, Cletus, were like arguing back and forth. Me, I, I really got into the argument that Koberger was gay. But I did it to prove a point, and then I stopped. Like right in the mid, right when it was as heated as it could get, I stopped and said, "I don't believe Koberger is gay. I just wanted to prove a point that anything can be turned into a discussion, and the more outrageous it is, the more attention it gets." Right? But did you see? But did you see what I did there? If I was to push that narrative, yeah, and I'm sure people are going to watch this video, and somebody's going to be like, "Hey, that sounds logical." Yeah. You're going to run to somebody else's channel and be like, before long, you're going to be hearing, again, a double Elantra narrative. Right. And, and some I, of the I creators think... pushing that next week. You say double Elantra? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, double Entendre? <laughs> no, the double Elantra double... makes total sense. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, the double Elantra. Yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> and, and, and look at, let, let's, if this, if this is, is shown to be true, right? Imagine being that kid Koberger and just think of the luck. Let's God. if he's acquitted here, just think of the kind of luck this son of a bitch is gonna have in life because it's gonna be pretty much none. Okay. Hey, he reminds me yeah. of that comic strip, the born loser. That would be him. <laughs> How right? You're in criminology school, yeah. You had a drug problem, but let's just say that it isn't him, and yet look at all of his life, and he's destroyed this kid because he drove a white Elantra. <laughs> Right, that was the contributing factor because he had insomnia and drove around at night. He's, I mean, this guy's life is gone. The He's gonna have loser, to hide, you know. You remember yeah, no that matter how it comic turns strip? out. Yeah, this poor that, bastard. That comic strip, <laughs> that bastard didn't have a, a shed of hope in this life. He, everything he did was wrong. Yeah, and I think it's criminal taking all this time to do it. I think it's it's bad specifically for the victim's parents. This shouldn't take three years to, to you. You arrested this guy, you indicted the guy, and you said you were ready to go for trial. And now you, you, you've been spending all of this time denying discovery to the defense? That's why we're where we're at. We're not where we're at because the defense was ready to prosecute Brian Koberger. That's an absolute lie. Yeah. Now, what are the, what are the, when they ask for discovery or the, the supplemental requests, right, they, there's a response from the prosecution or from the court, yeah. right? What do they say? What do they? They'll either argue against providing that discovery, um, or, or they'll uh, they'll agree to it, and then ask for it to, for for a period of time to, to uh, comply. But in this what, case, so what's, what's what I did. No, what you do? Oh yeah, you put the dick back up. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Listen, people can choose. People can choose whatever they want in their sexual life. I, I, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the YouTube screen where that does. You if you. If you like to live at the end of a cul-de-sac, do you, do you, there you go. <laughs> sack man. So what was I sack. that's why it's called cul-de-sac. He's wondering you're a sack man. <laughs> hey, like Koberger drove around in there and had some fun. He was, and uh, right. he he the sack. Was you said he was gay, so therefore that's that's the pickle park, right? <laughs> Listen, I, I honestly think that you're gonna see a lot of chaos in how this case was put together. You, you got officer Payne. You got a few other guys. You got some very inexperienced officers. You look at how the CSI was dealt with. There's a lot of issues with this case. And the fact is, there's no reason that that a that a. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what that judge says. I had to file complaints against the, the district attorney when she says there's 51 giga terabytes of data that's been thrown up in the air like a deck of cards. Okay, and we have to sort it all out. And all the cards have the same back to them. So it's like they threw up 51 terabytes of playing cards that are all identical. Some landed face up, some landed face down. And she's got to now pick up all of these cards and figure out where they go. What kind of bullshit is that for a prosecution to do to a defense attorney? If they did that. I mean, I, I did off, I often think 51 terabytes is there a possibility it's redundant files. It's like she multiple did say, copies of is. the same files. Yeah. She just said that in open court with, with the argument for a deadline on discovery. Yeah. I she mean, just said that in open like, court to the judge. But where did the terabytes come from? Did they come from the camera? Did no, they this, I suspect it's going to be all the interviews with all the people they interviewed. Remember, they, they had to build a case. So anything that's related to investigating the case of the Idaho 4, I suspect 51 terabytes of data 
Some of it is going to be not anything anybody will use in court. It might have yeah. something to do with the case, but of no importance. Do you know what I mean? Like a surveillance video of him driving down, going to work. Okay. What? They may have been part of their work, and they may have collected the video images of that, right? right. But it's not something right. that they're going to put into discovery to, to argue the case that he did it at 4 a.m. Just because you saw him drive to work every day for the next two weeks after the murder, they're not going to show all that video. I mean, you'll be there forever. Hey, my brain's going really fast right quick. Let me say what I'm about to say. Okay, now I'll let y'all keep mm -hmm. going. Okay, since the crime, what we know about serial killers, they can't keep quiet, okay? Or they can't keep without committing some kind of other crime. Wouldn't they have had him driving around the college area or how even the King Road house? to reminisce would they not have him ha going because they didn't arrest him for a month so what the fuck was he doing for that month according to them normal everything he went to work if he, he was went... a, if he was the killer come on man all the serial killers that you've heard of they don't sit around and fucking go and do normal shit other than um well, they also collect mementos. They also well, collect mementos. They also go they go back to the scene, as you're suggesting, usually yeah. more than once, right? Wouldn't um, they have caught him on fucking pings? His cell phone would have definitely been on, or did he turn his cell phone off every fucking time? Well, can I hear here's, here's, a, good, here's a good question? Here's a good Excuse question. Excuse my language, but you know. From November 13th to December 7th, when the police came forward looking for the 11 to 13 Elantra. From the day of the crime to the seventh, um, do they have Koberger going through that area several times? That's the question. And if, if they, they don't, do, that would, right? And if they don't, why not? Why didn't he continue? He went there twelve times. All of a sudden, I'm going to quit going because there was a murder there. Who gives a fuck? You can't tie me to it. I was going the wrong way at the wrong time. So therefore, right. why didn't I go down that road anymore? How come you didn't have me? pinging in that area anymore all right that's a good point because like you know that house that exploded in arlington virginia you saw that video right I, I i used to live like two blocks from there and so we moved out you know an hour away but i was any opportunity i could find i was trying to go see it i wanted to go see it like yeah. say in your example say say example for example like i caused the explosion um i wouldn't go near it right but if i I'm just curious, like anybody would, and it seemed like if 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 Brian Koberger didn't do this crime and he had a pattern of being there 12 times, he wouldn't have stopped all of a sudden. You know, he would have gone by. It's like I wonder what. But the thing is, well, for 12 gauge from your experience in criminology stuff, if he goes back around 9 a.m. after a crime that happened around 4 a.m. five hours later and doesn't see any police activity or anything. Do you think at that point he feels like, wow, I guess I can just go on living normally because there's no way that they figured out. And, you know, my alibi is good. I've got my alibi ready. I just like to drive around. I didn't leave any of my any proof of me in that house forgetting the DNA part. So I'm good. I'm I'm fine. Well, here's the question. Here's the question. OK, because I'm all about questions. If they have his phone pinging around that house at 9 a.m., 9 30. Why the fuck did he have his phone on at 930 and he turned it off to commit the crime? Right. Isn't, isn't that like counterproductive? You're going to come back with your phone on. Right. To the to the crime scene. That you were smart enough and to I turn it, it off. You and can, I turned yeah. it off before. Yeah, you were smart enough to turn it off, but, but you're going to go back and display your presence the next morning. Yeah. Or the next day. I mean, does that show does that show extreme confidence that uh no it you know, shows you ignorance? It, it would show it, ignorance if he's a smart. I mean, I don't know if people are embellishing his brilliance because you could say I'm brilliant, but I could make a lot of stupid life mistakes where other people would say I'm a fucking moron, you know. But book wise, I could be brilliant in your eyes. Right. But as far as living life, I'm a fucking moron. So is he a fucking moron? the way he lived his life because most drug addicts or recovering drug, drug addicts are fucking morons on how they live their lives they don't think things through they they don't look at the consequences they're very impulsive and they don't 
figure that people are smarter than they are. So they do things that they've done before thinking that nobody's going to put the dot together. Nobody as smart as them until they get caught. And then they're like, oh, fuck, I need to change that little part of my MO because that's how I keep getting caught. But many people never get down that line because they they aren't analytical. They're very responsive. So based on your question, when he went back at 930, was that a responsive move? Was that, uh, well, I got to go see what what I caused. Is there a lot of people there? Is there a lot of cops there? You know, this, that, and the other. And did it did it, it give him an emotional downer that he wasn't looking for when he saw nobody? It's like right. expecting to see an explosion and flames. And, all <laughs> and you get there, and there's no fucking parade for you. There's nothing. Right. You run it up the flagpole to see who salutes and nobody's there to salute. Nobody salutes. Right. You know? <laughs> exactly. What about, uh, is it any possibility, is there any possibility that he turned off his phone because he planned on keeping it on him and he didn't want it ringing while he's going into the house? I never thought about that until just now. But yeah, is that, but see, uh, the problem with that, is that a possibility? That why, why is he carrying a, 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 a murdering knife in a sheath? Why is Because he it's very sharp. No, 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 no! Absolutely, I don't keep. I don't take mine out of my sheath unless I plan Bro, on, if I'm on like your house, getting cut I with it. Person, hey, do we, house, do we carry a loaded? Back. Hey, do we carry a loaded penis in our sheath? Of course we do. <laughs> but but you know my point is that's that's not how you yeah, wield that. Right? Don't take it out unless you're going to. There's something it. wrong with that, Jeff. You don't you don't carry your murder. It's like carrying a gun into a house with the bullets in your pocket. Yeah, but what if you don't do? have it on your belt because you don't need you don't want the belt because that's going to slow you down stripping your clothes your your coveralls mm-hmm. off. So you've got it. You've got a sheath and you've got a knife and you the sheath, sheath protects the you from cutting yourself as much as anything. That's that's no, kind of no. the purpose. you leave the sheath in the car because the minute that hand no. that hand enters yes. No, because the moment you're you're coming out of there, your your plan is to put it. You don't want to cut yourself. You're just increasing your chances of cutting yourself okay. if you don't oh, have okay. the sheath. Well, That's just my opinion. Do? I know you. I know you're going to criticize me for I've having committed a different violent belief, crimes, but... and I know violent criminals. And I'm telling you, you well, don't. Congratulations, but I mean, it's you don't still break have into a opinion. home with your weapon not at the ready. You absolutely enter the property with the intent to do harm or defend okay. yourself. Okay. You well, well, how do we know he didn't take it out? He could have taken it out when the. Hey, when he as he went through the door. Person. Let's look at the other perception. Okay, let's look at the other side. At what point would he take it out of the sheath? Would he go? Because me, if I was going to take the knife out with the sheath, I'd take it out the moment I got out of the car, throw the fucking sheath in the in the yeah. car, and walk into the building with the knife. That's it. But if you're walking in with the sheath, Jeff, at what point, if you were the person, would you take that sheath off? Would it be in the room? Would it be as you enter the house? Would it be up the stairs? At what point? See, this is how we need to have a discussion. I mean, maybe coming through the kitchen. Maybe when you get to the door, you're opening the kitchen door. Okay. Maybe you've got you've unsheathed it then, and then now you're going up. Now you and you've got both both hands are filled with something, and you go up. And if if his intent is to only encounter Maddie because that's who he sees through the back window easiest. And then it's it's in my belief when Kaylee comes is coming across the hall saying I and that's just my belief that she's coming across the hall and and relatively calmly or not calmly but just saying there's someone here basically I think there's someone here because the dog is barking like there's someone here I'm going to investigate startles him and he drops the knife or maybe he maybe Ann was right maybe he did truly place it. Maybe she didn't intend to in, uh, insinuate it's the police you know, placing I, I, I it on the, but maybe placed it down to then to then do what he did to Maddie. But I really think that he took a. I really think not a lot of people talk about it, but I think he took a lesson out of Ted Bundy's book. He knocked him out first, and then he proceeded to stab them. That way, you can. It's a quiet murder. You can control where all the the blood goes, and I think that was his methodology on all of them except Kaylee. I think came in and surprised him. And um, and he had to deal with her in a different way. But they said that I have read somewhere that her face was pretty messed up. And I think if again, thinking I don't even like to call it the butt end of the knife. I'd rather call it the hammer because it is a hammer. And somebody takes a hammer to your face good five or ten times. Um, 
you're you're going to be pretty messed up. Right. I, I, I just find it nonsensical to enter a crime scene of a planned murder by somebody that's supposed to have been stalking and planning it all out, that he would take the main weapon of death, the killing instrument, and enter that property with it in a sheath that required him to engage both hands to display that weapon, to then do his deed and have both hands occupied. That's but the intent, the intent of the sheath is also to use after the crime as well. No, it's not. You put it not back you're... in. You put it back in so that you don't cut yourself. The idea is don't cut yourself because you cut yourself just the littlest major... bit. You drip. You dripping you're in your blood into that major house. crime. You got more of a chance to slice your hand putting it back in the sheath than you do walking out of the house of that night. Not if you practice okay. at home barehanded, and that's how you get the DNA under the. Okay, I'm going to put myself in his position. Okay, because I can't. I can't expect y'all to, but I'm going to put myself in Koberger's position. If I was the one getting out of that Elantra, not the, not the one on, um, on Ridge Road going the wrong way at the wrong time, not that one, I'd be on the one back in the tree line behind the house. I'd be getting out of that car. I would throw the fucking sheath off because that's how inexperienced I am with a knife. And what if you slip down that hill? Hey, but hold on. With a I'm, unsheath, I'm, unsheath I'm a knife. cocky motherfucker, okay? I'm a cocky, arrogant bastard. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to fall down a fucking hill that I've been staking out for. Because this is, I've told both of you, this is how it works. True. I would be the one that goes by that house 12 times because I'm going to, playing football, you practice what you're going to do. So, therefore, it's muscle, muscle uh, memory rather than brain memory, okay? And that's how it works. So I would have I would have known every little crevice going down that hill because I would have seen it twelve times. I go down the hill. I have the knife out. I don't know if the dog gonna come attack me. Fuck it. I'm gonna get the dog before he gets me. You know what I mean? I don't know if there's somebody drunk on the fucking couch outside. I'm gonna take him out before he takes me out. I'm gonna have that sheath off before I enter that house. And there's no way I'm taking it in if I don't want to leave any kind of evidence. But that's me. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot when it comes to a knife. So even me as an idiot, knowing that I'm going to throw this knife sheath in my car, and once I'm done what I'm doing, then I'm going to wipe the knife off, run water over it. I saw some fucking asinine comment. He supposedly put an apple and ran the knife through the apple to get the blood off and the evidence or whatever. That could be true, whatever. But me as a person, unexperienced, I'm running the knife with hot water, not cold water. I'm running the knife under the sink, washing the blood off. If there's a towel nearby, I'm going to wipe it on that. If not, I'm going to wipe it on my damn suit because I'm inexperienced like that. I'm going to walk out the slider. I'm going to go back up the fucking hill and probably trip going up the hill. I'm not tripping down the hill. But here's another interesting thing. I go backwards in my mind, so, so hang with me here. The only part that this doesn't make sense is going up the stairs to the girl's bedroom. See, I'm a clumsy motherfucker, and unless I've been there more than once, I'm going to, if I've never been in the house, and I have the knife unsheathed going up the steps, and I trip, guess who gets cut? Right. I do. So if I trip going up the stairs or go, coming down the stairs without the sheath, I'm fucked. And you said it's nine stairs up, and then you turn, make a U-turn, and then it's ten stairs to the very top, right? I think so. I think that's what like we that. counted. I think that's what we counted. But how would you know that unless you've been in the house? And Sergeant uh, Friday made a good point, too, in another video, and in this one, too, where he said that six-inch drop, if you don't have the sheath on it, you're going to fucking drop the knife, aren't you? Trying to catch yourself? How many right. times have you fallen and only used one hand to catch yourself? Right. Where yeah, you if you trip going up from Dylan's hallway to the main room, either trip coming in or out of that. You're right. right. You would think he may have dropped or he may have fell forward. Remember they said there was a loud thump? And that's what I said. With the, in, the, in that description, they talk about a loud thump Dylan heard. And that could have been someone tripping on that barrier, that, that little step there between her room and the, the common area. Yeah. I mean, I'm just being I'm just being comical because this is how my mind works. You know, if I'm going through that and I have a knife in one hand and I've just killed four people and I see a bitch in a shock frozen phase, 
no no shade at Dylan, but if I see somebody in a shock or I don't see them and they're in a shock frozen phase and I'm falling, how does she not laugh at that? Well, how does she not notice <laughs> that? How does she not laugh at him busting his ass and trying to find a knife at the same time? But that's how I would imagine he um because he, that would he, be real. I've funny. always thought he'd tripped on it on the way to Xana's, but then was looking out for it on the way back. Yeah, which well, is where, even where, if he tripped, where he even was seen. If he tripped on the way up, Jeff. What are the odds of him keeping the knife in his hand and not cutting himself as he's landing? Yeah, well, it's possible he tripped but didn't fall completely. I mean, he might have, might have, right. might have caught him off guard. He could have stumbled up up that step and, and maintained his balance, but made a big thumping noise. Dropped to a knee. He didn't necessarily had to go sprawling like you know, like, like you know, to the point where the knife had to fly out of his hand. Yeah, he could have yeah. tripped on it, but that doesn't mean it was a you know. We, we've had all different levels of trips. Some of them you recover from. Some of them you go right, right down like a fucking boom, right? But that telling of the story, though, twelve gauge was so convincing. Your story was so convincing. I think people are going to think it's you more than Papa Rogers. They're going to like he's got a lot of detail in there. He's <laughs> Well, if they're that fucking stupid, I guess they'll believe anything. That's my that's my statement right there. What, Do you, you think he was jacked up making this calculated action or he was sober? I'm gonna go first and then I'll get y'all's opinions, guys. Um I would say that he was jacked up based on what I said in another video and I stick behind my thoughts. Um I believe he was on some kind of either stimulant. Definitely he wasn't on heroin. He could have nodded off on the way up. <laughs> and then he <laughs> definitely would have cut himself. <laughs> right, right. Okay, I'll let you guys. I mean, I'm getting delirious. I don't know why, but I hope my humor. No, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because there's so many different stories you could create out of, out of the information that is there. It's mind-bending. It's endless, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just speaking for myself. I'm. I like to bring humor in a little bit. I'm not bringing humor at the fact of what happened. I'm just seeing this play out because this is how I would go through this house. I'd be a clumsy ass killer. There's no way that I could make it through that house without wiping out. Those floors look slick as shit. If I'm <laughs> walking through blood, how the fuck are my boots or whatever or booties? Because chances are he was wearing surgical booties. How is that not going to make you slide? Have you ever walked on surgical booties? Blood is like engine oil. Blood is very, yeah. very slippery until it dries. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a good song title. Blood is like engine oil. I want to write a song with that. I like that. <laughs> yes. So, Sarge, you're next. Because if it makes any money. Sarge, you're next. So, do right. you think he was jacked up on this calculated action, or was he sober? I don't think he was there. I think he was sober. I don't even think he was there. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he was, uh, we agree on something, Sarge. See, I knew it would happen. <laughs> I think he was, if he was on anything, he was just on the adrenaline of, of the moment. Yeah, and I, I don't know many heroin users that switch to uh, um, a, car, a cocaine or a meth or something like that. I'm sure it's possible, but I, I don't know any personally, and I, I've known a lot of heroin users. You think he would have been smoking weed to take the edge off? Eh, I don't know that smoking weed would really do anything to someone that generally had a heroin addiction. That, that's, <laughs> you know, that you know that that's the king addiction oh. right there. Yeah, I'm being funny right there. You that's know. sad, man, that heroin. That, that's some shit that's hard to break. That's I mean, really if he did do something, that goes back to our theory, or not even theory, because that's not a fucking theory. It's our um discussion earlier i said what if he relapsed that could have been the 12 times he was around there looking for some good shit you know yeah well also too maybe do you look at the what what if if that's truly his car we see five times or like in the pca it said it appeared the, uh, the vehicle it appeared to unsuccessfully attempt to park or turn around in the road you know i mean is that is that an indication of any kind of impairment. See, no. he did try to do a U-turn there, Jeff. Is that where you got that thought? Well, I mean, it's um, 
I see, because that I was joking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, the U turn, the wrong turn, wrong way. Yeah. So wait, what's that? What's that Dr. John song? It must have been the right it was the right place, wrong time. <laughs> so I should do a music are, video to that song. You are saying, you are saying that no impairment. I'm saying yes. So y'all agreed that he was strictly sober. I'm saying that there could have been a stimulant involved. So we'll go with yeah. that. Yeah, the, either way, it doesn't know. We we won't know until I'm, more of the trial stuff comes forward. More more discovery, more motions. Then we'll I mean, if the, if his DNA wasn't found on this knife sheath, you know, what kind of position would he been in? What kind of case would this be? Would he pretty much have gotten away with it if it's truly him? Well, they still have the camera shot, so. Yeah, no, but it's not illegal to drive around at night alone. I mean, no, that's what I mean, without the DNA, know. without convincing the jury that that DNA proves he did it, that's the only thing the prosecution actually has to go on based on what. Well, I'm then, they, but if they do have the light bulb camera that says this guy likes to drive around, except for watch here, he goes past this light bulb camera into a cul-de-sac, and he doesn't come out for thirteen minutes, and when he comes right. out, if, if, he's if, flying. If can I say He's trying to get 88 they, miles an hour to go into the back to the future. I'm, excuse me, Jeff. They must establish that as his vehicle and him in it. Right. It's a requirement by the state's level of proof. You you can show videos of cars, but if you can't place the prosecution, can't identify you in that car or that car belonging to you, right? That's not evidence. That's a story. Even it's if it is me in that car. Listen, even if it is me in that car, okay? If you can't rightfully establish it by fact and you just have a video image of a like car, that's not you're not going to convict me with it. So let Sorry, me ask buddy. you this. Let me ask you this. I'm such an idiot that these 12 other times I don't notice that there's a fucking light camera and that there's a camera on Linda Lane and that there's a camera on Ridge Road and that there's a camera in front of the Exxon and there's a camera in all these areas. Hell, there's a camera right outside my apartment. I don't yeah. notice any of these cameras. Am you I that? Give me, uh, am see, I that um, clueless to reality? Am I that in my head that I can't pick out a camera from a light bulb? The Linda Lane yeah. camera might be hard to um, have spotted, perhaps. Especially if you it. consider the 12 times he was there, 11 of them were at this very late hour, like when the murder happened. Only one of them was during the day, which I, I wonder if the during the day one, if they're connected and it is like he's casing the joint, is that 12th one. It's like, well, I want to have at least one where I see what this my exit is with sunlight, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. What were you going to well, say? Listen, if he did all of that reconnaissance at that time of night, it would be very difficult to identify cameras. Let's be fair. Okay. Yeah. And True. all his reconnaissance is in the dark because that's what the cops told us. So if we're going to consider that reconnaissance, right? There should have been many, 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 many trips during the day, okay, where he could get an idea of what he was looking for. Remember, this guy is a, uh, what's he got? Uh, he's going for a PhD in criminology and IT and cloud. That's his going to, that's, the cloud is all about video and images. And, and all, so you mean to tell me that this guy with that training didn't know that? He wouldn't even have to surveil the area to know there were cameras. Here's what would convict him for me. If they found a camera that allowed for infrared detection, Okay, and recordings that like so you could drive by and know if there's a motion camera on someone's home because the infrared beam is constantly lit. We can't see it, but an infrared camera can. So if you found that kind of footage in his possession, then of course he did it. So but my point is he would be smart enough to know that any motion camera has an infrared beam that must be broke before it starts to record. So all you do is drive around the neighborhood with a camera that records uh, infrared images. And you'll be able to pick out every freaking camera around there. Here's Almost another, at least ninety percent of them, guaranteed. Here's another question for you guys, okay? Because I'm just my brain is going a million miles an hour right now. You remember early on in the case, um, they had a a ring camera with a picture of a guy in a mask, and he was dressed mm -mm. all in black. Mm -mm. You don't remember that? I yeah, I think that was debunked. Didn't the ma the mask kind of look like the mask in that movie, The Mask? Except it was instead of being well, green, yeah, yeah. it was that it was kind of black. There's no, there's no picture like that at all. That's okay, real. so that would debunk. Okay, well, yeah, I was gonna say this: Is there 
is there a possibility that maybe <laughs> I'm just being silly right now. Is there a That's possibility it. that um, he went to the wrong house, noticed the ring camera, it caught him, and then he ended up, got back in his car and ended up going to do this. I don't know where I'm going with that. That's... No, I don't even know where you're, how you're coming up with that. No. Um, is there now we should question what you're on, if you're on something. <laughs> yeah, huh? is, there you... is there a possibility <laughs> that he put the mask mask on? And... and that's what she, when she said he was wearing a mask, she meant that it was that movie, The Mask? Yeah. <laughs> but he had, a, he had a hat on too, right? Wasn't he clad in black? With a black hat and mask black. With eyebrows? Hey, oh. he was... And he pulled it off just for a moment to do a Groucho Marx with his eyebrows. And How do you walk by on. a five foot ten blonde and not see her after committing those crimes? How do you do that without striking out at her? I, mean, I think I think it's because he's got that bright light in his face. That's what I think. Not to be a pervert because no. I don't want to come across as a sexual deviant here, but I mean any woman that I would come across at that time of night, there's we're guys. We're gonna stop and look at the package. You know, well, um, you just killed four people though, and you're walking by, and this person's looking out the window. I don't give a shit. Door. I don't you're give a bang shit. Her? I still have a penis. <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> bang her, you freak. <laughs> I still have a penis. Somebody needs to put you on probation. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, bro. I'm I mean, I'm not trying to sound like a deviant, I'm trying to be funny, <laughs> here, but, but seriously, this is the way I think. I could have killed four people, ten people. I'm walking by Dylan's room. I see her, and I see her package from head to toe. I'm going to at least look and be well, like, how, oh, but, but isn't it a little strange that she remained alive yet was a direct witness to, to the person that supposedly committed the crime? Because she looked that good to him. Nah, man, I just don't. I don't <laughs> see. I mean, everything that goes into all of this planning, and then, and then there's a surprise at the end. But rather than right, one more one more murder would have made more sense. And that he went there to kill everybody. Now that he left her alive after she saw him, it's just so perplexing. It's like, really? Okay. Hey, twelve gauge. There's a there's a picture that of what may 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 kind of represent what that good vibes light may have. Um, like if you get a, give you a sense of like the the darkness of the the house compared to the brightness of that light and what he was basically walking into. Standing, but there was that blonde standing in the doorway just as he he crosses into the hallway. There's, he went by that door twice, once, twice. He's coming by it for a third time. He's going by that bedroom door. It's open this time. I don't know. When he goes light. past this light, yeah, when he goes past this light the first time, it's the light is to his back when he's coming from Xanatar. No, no, room. I meant the door. He's he looking. went by her bedroom door three times and it was closed. Yeah, but it was fine. Yeah, I think it was closed all the, all those other times. But hey, the time that she, and, and he would have time seen that she that. saw him, it was open. And so, so how did he not catch that, Jeff? Please. Well, because Stay he's careful. looking into a bright light. Just like if you got somebody, if you're standing in front of a, a car and they've got their headlights on you, can you describe what the driver looks like even if he stands up at Joe, that, you know, outside the in, car? That's an, in, that's an interior light that would not blind you that way. It, it would it would enable you to walk in those areas other no, than in a pitch like a dark yeah. in a pitch dark house that's a bright light and you look okay. into it your irises are going to close down when we took my my son on a on a camping trip they took all the flashlights away from the kids because we were going to go on a night hike and they said you know we're taking your flashlights away because all it takes is one blast with some light into your eyes and it takes a full 24 minutes before your irises open back up fully so that you can see in this dark you know out outside so it all it takes is he's just got to come out of xana's dark room and then he goes past that light and he's not going to see yeah, uh, that, he's not going to see it. hallway from her room forward there's illumination he's not walking from pitch black and someone flashing that light in his eyes he's walking into well, a we don't we don't hallway. know sure we, we do don't know that how light. lit the house was we i'm we can wait, assume wait, that wait, the good wait, vibes wait, light was wait. on hang on hang on you're telling me that that light's blind enough to blind him and cause if it's the only issues, light but not bright enough to illuminate that room in that hallway with some illumination there that room, that light is not going to light the hallway. It's the the hallway is around. Well, the, he's the not corner. saying he's not saying it's going to light it up. It's illuminating. There. There's there's you can see your once you come out of her room, you're going to see yeah, that there's, there's light ahead of you. Shadow. There's going to be, be light ahead of you though. The staircase. There's going to be. He's got to come. He's got to come. He's got to come out of Zana's room, make a right turn, look into a bright light, and she's got her door cracked open just a little, and she can see 
His light, his face is lit <laughs> by this good get, vibes light. You're so cute at adding little tidbits that were never spoken. I opened my door and looked out on three separate. How far did? Okay, again, wrong direction, wrong time. But open the door. There's how much? How much, Sergeant? Oh my God! So See, it's again, again. It's like that. It's not. It's, details says, don't matter. What does opening the door mean? A I'm crack. Not. Opening no. the door, a crack. Why not? Yeah. Because you open your door in your own home because you, you just, live there. You just started look, opening guys. the door and you see a person coming right, towards right, you. Do you done. keep on opening all right, it? All right. Yeah, we're done. You know really? what I just, hey, you know what I just, you know better. Noticed? You know what I noticed in this picture? Wow. How close the staircase is to the fucking, that's the staircase right next to the good vibe sign, right? It's more. Is that it's, a staircase it, or is that a to, book? To go, you're talking about to go down to the first level? Yes. No, go to there's the more. left. Yes, that, is that a staircase? Oh, yeah. You're seeing through the open doorway. That's the staircase that goes upstairs. Yes. Okay. So that no, 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 no. This is this is to the left this of the window light, down the hallway this, are stairs. This is window is the far left window on the second level. If you're looking at it from okay, the road. Okay. Now look. You see where it says good vibes, right? Now go directly mm -hmm. to the left. You see those steps? Are those that's steps the, or is that a book? No, no. That's that's a tree branch right there. No. With a vent. Well, take the take the PKC uh thing off the screen. You see okay. it. Wait here, I can zoom in to this. <laughs> okay, go the other direction. The other see, direction. that's a tree branch and that's a vent. Okay. Now that's a beer going, bottle. Keep going, keep going the other way. Keep going the other way. Go the other way. Not that no, way, the, the other way. way. The, the other, other way. way. That's the that's the wall. Keep that's the outside right wall. There. That's it. Oh. That's Oh, that's the outside wall. I thought that was a staircase. No, it's just the window with the the the, the siding of the house. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so that handprint is on the window. This this right? photo is taken probably from say the photographers maybe near where the trash can is outside, or okay, maybe a so, little bit up the hill. So that handprint is I always Zana's always Zana's room is to the right of that pinkish uh, painting. Right. I always thought always this room. was a mirror, but this is so, the, the window pane. This is looking through the window. We see you right. saw many so, investigators in there looking at the floor and, and checking things out right there. But see that handprint right there? That's the window pane. I always thought that was a mirror right there. I think I have another one I was just looking at here. You, you Wait, see what you're talking you about? You see that handprint? Right, ben yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that definitely handprint was spooky. I always thought, always thought that was a mirror for some reason. That's here, let me show you this other. Let me show you this other picture of the same window. God, I need to stay off the water. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the same. Where'd it go? Same, same window. I got. I have yet another one as well. Okay. Um. All right, here. Let me get it. It wouldn't more. have been. It wouldn't have been illuminated like that was. But there no, because I think the yeah the police of uh, investigators, I'm sure, increased the light so they could light. see stuff. It would have been light enough that it would have bounced off the staircase to create a to cast a shadow. What staircase would that that good vibes light be hitting though? The staircase directly in front of it. The one the that goes down to the very first level. Stairs. Yeah, to Bethany's room. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's like but a, there's a little, little yeah there's like a little wall. It would have hit that and bounced down the hall. There would have been a shadow toward um, right going down to the, the very floor. to the very yeah, bottom it floor. Been a shadow wherever the light quit going. You know what I mean? It would have it would have headed down towards Anna's room, whether it was a foot, two feet. It would have eventually darkened. You know. Well, no, this not, but I mean, wait, like just so the, we're clear. Hey, so we're clear. This good vibe light is on the same floor with Xana's room, right? Right, right. Okay. Just okay. look, look at sure. the light behind me. There's a shadow right there where the light quits hitting right above my head. You see that? But what is a what is the point you're making with the staircase, though? I don't, I don't think he because most. I don't think he think he went down no, the staircase. No, because one of you said that that there would be no light no illuminated light down that hallway towards Anna's room and there would be only so far because it would be bouncing off the staircase the wall listen i'm going to tell you that if you go look 
That good vibes light is on the wall, and to the left of that wall is the actual hallway leading to the kitchen. Yeah. That good vibes light is, and and you're you're seeing a reflection of siding, but the image that that you're looking at on your screen that you had up correctly shows what you had asked. That good a reflection vibes of sighting, siding? No, no, no. Yes. Listen. It's the I'm actual siding. The three, I'm looking at the 3D tour. Okay. I can mm -hmm. give you guys a link if you want to go look at it. Why don't you bring that up? Uh, yeah, bring it up Paul because Gage? I was trying to. You want me to bring it up? That. Yeah, I was trying yeah, to. I don't know how to do that. So, yeah, but the 3D. It's 1122tour.com. I got it. Yeah, it shows, it shows exactly what we were looking at. And it's and it shows you that um, the illumination wouldn't be bright down the hallway, but you would be walking from a room towards a room that you knew was illuminated. In other words, your eyes would be aware of that. You'd be walking towards the light. Then you would turn the corner and you would confront the light and then you would walk through that doorway to get to the kitchen. And on that walk to the doorway, there'd be some residual um, illumination in that hallway to an extent. Not a lot, but some. See and that little woman wall stand right in her there? doorway. I'm just for a woman to be in her doorway and him not see her, a door that he knew was closed the last two times he went by it is stunning to me. Just it's right. See, this is this is hitting him in the face and her door is open a crack here. To see him coming around this corner, going out the kitchen. No, no, I don't accept crack, Jeff, because that's not what it says. Why? She said, "I opened my door three times and looked out." She said she yelled once. Well, let's let's pull so, up the PCA. Let's pull up the PCA. So read it. it. She's no, pretty specific I, in her opening of that door. So if you open a door, and you're you're looking out three times, and you're uncertain that you know you hear somebody crying, you hear a dog barking, sounds like somebody playing upstairs. You hear somebody say, it's okay, I'm here to help you. Let's be realistic. Are we going to open that door wide, or are we going to open it just where we can put our head out to look around? What are we going to do? Well, she lives there, and she thinks the noises are coming from her roommate, right? So unless she knows these noises are horrific screams, right? If, if what she's saying is true... She's saying that she heard some noise that maybe she was playing with the dog. I think I heard someone say this. Nothing the thing is, it just that. doesn't say it doesn't say how much she opened the door. That's all. It doesn't say how much, but to, to assume it's a crack is, is not fair. Well, to assume it's wrong way, wrong direction, wrong time, too. You know? But would you, hey, put yourself in that. You know how I put myself in this. You want me to, I can read it if you want. No, yeah, put, your, put yourself in that scenario, Jeff. How far would you open the door well it depends on timing if you've just started to open it and he's coming by you then you haven't got it open very far just because of the timing of the situation but the, if it doesn't say the time we can't assume the time either way but i think if the way. if it's that she didn't get killed there's a good chance that he, she wasn't seen and it's plausible that she wasn't seen because he's got a bright light in his face he might be looking down to make sure he didn't trip on the step again so Two reasons why he might not see not her. For anything, but but, but I mean, that, as a photographer, look. she he would be lit very nicely with a, a light at eye level that right into his bright, face. That would not light that room enough to want to read it. We just saw the photo bright. of the light of how bright it is even at but night. That, but so that's I, being I, captured in, in, in yeah no that, I don't well, think turn that's the really light. Hey Jeff, turn the lights off. No, that's a yeah, but turn no, that's an inaccurate representation. Off. That's well, an inaccurate representation because basically because you got the photograph. You know, this isn't this this image doesn't uh, match the photograph. There it is, right there. So, what do you mean this guy would go blind? Exactly. See, you're looking at a, a representation, a computer representation that doesn't even match an actual photo. I mean, if you want to believe the computer representation over an actual photo we just looked at, be have at it. <laughs> but here's what it says: D DM stated she opened her door for the third time after she heard the crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. DM described the figure as 5'10 or taller, male, not very muscular, but ath athletically uh, built with bushy eyebrows. Male walked past DM as she stood in a frozen shock phase. Male okay. walked towards backsliding door. She opened her door and looked out. And she opened it all the way and slammed it into the wall next to it. Of course, go fine. I'll 
concede. <laughs> but I don't know why I'm conceding because there's nothing that specifically well, because says there's nothing that. in there that, that you would specifically say. I You're my so, door and you know out. better. You know her better than I do. I don't know how. Well, I don't she know. Would open it the seems door. that you would try to, if you're describing what you saw, you would describe what you did. Well, when if you're you also describing you this killer that didn't kill her, then, you know, maybe yeah, is it I, possible I, I she didn't, that. he didn't, unless you think she's involved with him and that's a boyfriend that just came and got rid of these people who were keeping her awake. Maybe she texted him and said, Hey, I'm trying to sleep. Can you come wipe out all these four uh, friends of mine? I got to get some I sleep. You, I don't know where you come up with those theories, but if it's for a joke, that's it's fine. pretty creative. It's a joke. Hey, do you think, know. do you think she had, I mean, <laughs> being serious, you're, I, your jokes are worse than mine. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not hey, offending anybody with my jokes. Hey, just the way you get, act. Let's, times, let's, let's get, let's get back to classy. Okay. Um, based on what y'all <laughs> were just talking about, do you think she could have had somebody in that room with her? Do you think Ooh, Dylan? that, yeah, Dylan, do you think that or there could have been, like, she could have had a guy over there, you know, drinking with her or listening to oh, music? She could have had, she could have had someone in that house with her. A hundred percent she could have. You know, like, maybe it wasn't her interpretation that filled in these blanks. Maybe somebody else was looking out that door with her, but they put it on her because she's the one that lives in the house. Or, or what if that person was the doer? No telling. I mean, there could have been a There's bunch three of other male parents. DNAs in that house. There's three other male DNAs in that house. And the and another argument will be, that why didn't they genealogical those three DNAs? Doesn't it show that door cracked a little bit, Jeff? Yeah, just in one angle uh, right here. See, no. I would... <laughs> is that an open door to you? No. That's not an open door. Let me when give you open my door, When I open my door to look out where I live, I live in this house, and that's a party house. You've got all kinds of college roommates. If I was her or a him, and I were to open up my door concerned something was out there, it wouldn't be because I was afraid of a mass murderer, okay? I would open it up and look. And then, like she said, she yelled upstairs once. Her descriptions of things she did tell me she acted like a normal person would. See, why would she want to peek out of her door? It's got to be her roommates making noise. She said she heard him coming from the roommate's rooms. So when she opened that door, I accept that she opened and looked out like, like she normally would. Why wouldn't she? Well, maybe Why she doesn't she? want to be caught snooping if it's just a, a lover's yeah, spat between two already, of her roommates. She, already, she doesn't want to see. Yeah, I mean, you're, already you're convinced. You're, what, already did, what did he say about me? Though. I get my mind set on something and it's well, not going to change. Jeff, I got <laughs> facts to base this on. She actually said that I, she yelled up there. I got facts too. I got this photograph right here. You just said yourself when you saw the good vibes light it so dark. You, know, you said, there you go. So here so, you go. There you go. <laughs> so you know when she yelled up the stairs, right. I'm, I'm giving you all some information that I've never shared before. Um. When it said that she yelled up the stairs, I was under the impression she was on the first floor because that's something that I heard at the very beginning. See, in my mind, I thought there was a door downstairs to the first floor. I thought that it separated, you know, with a doorway. I didn't I had no clue that it was it was like it is. You know what I mean? I thought that she was in the other room downstairs. And she yelled up the stairs, hey, no. shut the fuck up. I'm trying to sleep. And That's I thought that there was a door right where that doorway where the step is. I thought yeah. there was a door right there that she would have walked up and opened and say, hey, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to sleep. But now that yeah. now that I saw, you know, not today, but, you know, when I started looking into this more clearly, she wasn't that far from those stairs where she would have yelled, shut the fuck up, I'm trying to sleep. Which direction would she have yelled that? Up the stairs or towards Dana's room? It depends on where she heard the noise. She thought she And how could she have not how could she have not heard Dana walking from the kitchen? If she was supposedly in the kitchen with her door dash shit, how could she have not heard that? Well she Does it say the, the PCA delivery. she yelled? I heard um, that very early on. Shut yeah, the fuck I believe up. it does. There's, there's a state. Her statement is, she describes going to the door three times. There's three different statements on going to the door, and opening. But I don't. I don't see 
that she yelled anything. Okay, here's a comment from the chat. Let's let's listen to what they got to say for a second. It says, I have a sliding door. If I hear strange noises on the porch, I slowly peek around the corner to see what is there. I don't just throw the door open and face something unknown. Well, that's a good point. But good what point. do you mean by you slowly peek around the corner? Clarify that a little more. Do you open it? Four inches, six inches, eight inches. A couple inches. She'll open. She's saying she's opening and peeking out as slowly as she can. So she's going to open big, the door. Right? Hey, I got a big wide head. It's at least three inches wide. So me peeking out a door would be at least three inches. Dude, if Get your head was three head. inches wide, you wouldn't be on here talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it should be I need, hell, I need to come in. hey, I'm not talking about, I'm not even going to go there because I don't want the deviancy to come out. But there's a three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wide, three inches wide, to get out, to look outside that, that door, yeah. I would need enough to put my hat through there, right? You just wouldn't keep... Jeff, can you go in front of that door? You just there? need... um. I think... Oh, yeah. You just need one eye to see through uh, a door. And, and I, I think no, the I other need two, two eyes. Times, I need two eyes. The other two times, there's no indication that the times prior to the third would make the third different. In other words, her motives for opening up that door and looking out weren't weren't nefarious motives. She was thinking that her roommates were, were making noise and they should shut up. There's, she hears them playing. She's coming out for those reasons, according to her. So on the third opening of that door, there's no reason to slightly peek out because it's just the third in the series of, of the previous, you know, another one to the two you just did. So, but there's no there's nothing about her yelling in the PCA. I don't know I um, exactly where her, that's documented. Um, she said she heard the dog barking. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she describes the thing she's hearing, but she doesn't describe what she does regarding yelling. I think that probably was in an article in the the mail newspaper, whatever that you had mm, mail. I or... thought that it was in, in there somewhere where she had described. She opened the door the first time, looked out, and didn't see anything. Um, then she opened the door the second time and called out for them to count or something like that. Here you go. And then Here's she a PCA. Out the third time, and she she witnessed a man, uh, and then you know what the story is with that. Okay, PKC says I peek around the corner by the fridge that faces the door. So far, so far, I just found raccoons and bears and goats. The occasional missionary. <laughs> that <a> missionary <laughs> style. <laughs> Mission, <laughs> missionaries with K bars. <laughs> no matter with the doors, which. The door so let me no matter you, what today's story it's, if it's missionary how by laying on your back you're able to peek around a corner that's my <laughs> only question <laughs> well you wanted to say it i just beat you to a 12 gauge man she she lost me at the raccoon man <laughs> Go. hmm. good god pk yeah hey, i got the pca up if you want uh 12 gauge up to you well, just review it real quick and see if it, if it mentions anything about her saying that she had, had made a comment. There should be three descriptions. Yeah, no, I've been... Let me see. Try and get right. it bigger. Um, yeah, none of it, though. None of the times, though, it says how much she opened the door at all. Let's see. DM stated... Hold on. Well, I'm looking for it. Hey, make it a little bigger. You're like my wife when we drive. It's like, I, I'm driving. Just relax. <laughs> Um, there's a fucking raccoon bear and a goat, damn it. <laughs> They're a rock band. Um, DM stated she looked out her bedroom window but did not. No, I'm sorry, not window. DM stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the com when she heard the comment about someone being in the house. Ref I guess referring to Kaylee saying there's someone here. DM stated she opened her door a second time when she heard what she thought was crying coming from Kernodal's room. DM then said she heard a male voice saying something to the effect of, it's okay, I'm going to help you. Um, at approximately 417. See, that's a security yeah, camera picking up the there. sound. That is not true information about her, her saying something. No, I think I read that in that mail. I did read it somewhere, too. Mail, whatever that mail... Um, I don't know what the, the name of the that guy is. who wrote the book, uh, not what's his face. No, the publication. Um, um yeah, it might have been. It's good to be correct. It might have been. That, that, that. 
Yeah, when it's not written in, in this, when it's not written in a verifiable document, then it's not true. Yeah, I mean, we've all heard it. it could, and, and if we've it is true, it's going to be... It's not in the yeah. PCA. You're right. It's not in the PCA. Right, so that means that, that yeah, that piece of information is useless. Yeah. Right. So the frozen, let's get back to the elephant in the room here. Jeff, you mentioned it a while ago, and we've talked about it. Other people have talked about it. What is your definition of a frozen shock phase? You want me to go first? You and Sarge? One at a time. Sarge, you go, want go to ahead. Go, go ahead, Sarge. No, no, go right ahead. No, I'm patient. I'm, I'm looking at this. I mean, I've, I've often wondered if it could it mean, I mean, I look at it a couple ways. I mean, either she's in fear is it possible she just meant you know if she was opening the door and and felt that okay this guy should have seen me but he act didn't react at all acted as if i'm invisible um and that was just weird so it was just a weird feeling but when i when i look at the pca though there's a phrase in there that makes me think i lean more towards fear because the male walked past. Here, I'll put it up. Um, here we go. Uh, where is it? The sorry. The male walked past DM as she stood in a frozen shock phase. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. DM locked herself in her room after seeing the male. The the locked herself in the room could imply fear. Um, Stop or right that's there. just stop right mm -hmm. there. So, if I see you walk past me, you saw how narrow that little opening is, right? She locks herself in her room. You're telling me he didn't hear her lock the door? And what I mean, I'm a killer, I just killed four people, and I heard you lock your door. I'm just gonna let you live. I'm just gonna say, okay, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna charge that to the game. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you live. There's a witness that just saw you walk by her. She we gotta her. assume. You gotta, gotta assume she closed it. I mean, when I go upstairs at three in the morning because I've been on a live stream with twelve gauge. When I go in the bedroom and I'm closing that door, that there has never been a quieter door close because the moment it just does a little click, my wife, my wife wakes up and says, "What time?" She she rolls oh. over. She grabs her phone. It's three a.m. So I agree days. with you. I, listen, I agree with you, Jeff. I agree with you, Jeff. And I'm not I'm not doing it just to prove my point, but I, oh, I agree damn, with there's you. Two to have it. There's two. Listen, I believe that she went in her room and quietly locked that door. I have no doubt in my mind that she did that. Okay. If it happened, that's the way it happened, according to those words. And in doing that, it tells me that she was conscious enough of the danger, yet still didn't do anything for eight hours. Therein lies a problem that needs to be explained. Yeah, I mean, either she, you know, either she, to the, to the point of being able to know to protect yourself as best you can at that moment in time. All she had was a door and a lock, and she engaged that activity in her mind. She did what she fight or flight. She fled. So she was. Now, would she have heard about this fight? On. I'm sorry, she was conscious of what was going on based on that behavior, and that makes me question the eight hours even worse. Would she have heard about this fight with Ethan and assumed that this was maybe the guy he fought with? And maybe she's like, I don't want to be involved with that. I heard about that. They were talking about it before we all started to go no, off to bed. No, no, no. I, we, we don't know. But if that's the case, then, no, if that's the case, that's the case. We don't know. But the idea she claimed she was in frozen shock phase. Okay. It's been, it's been what they've hung this eight hour well, time period. Yeah, on, but that, apparently she wasn't that frozen. <laughs> I mean, be, <laughs> being in a frozen, <laughs> being in a frozen shock phase, that does indicate that she was fearful of something. Of course. And her, her behavior was more than, more than just ancillary. And she closed and locked that door, but she didn't then pursue any action to contact her other roommates. She said he was hiding to the sliding door. Why didn't she listen for him to leave? Why didn't but she look you, out her back window and see if he left? Because her, her window would face the backyard, if I'm not mistaken, right? Right. So yeah, she but, also, but also, was that yeah. written in a way to make sure that they put emphasis on the fear that this was a person that wasn't supposed to be there in the home? Or was it based on her wording? You know, her it's wording. in quotation, so her wording is 
putting out there that she was fearful of whoever it was. Right. Fearful enough to, to actually do what we call flight. Flight yeah. or fight. Right. And her flight was completely consistent with, with someone that knows what they're doing. You close the door, you lock it. Would you still shake and still be scared? Yes. But then okay. you perform no other action until 11.56 a.m. the following well, morning. PKC says, PKC says maybe she didn't know if he actually left. So if he didn't actually leave, I mean. Why would you call them? You should have called the minute you got inside that room. Well, calling 911 would have been an option, obviously. I'm pretty sure she would have heard that car speeding off at 421 from her, with her wall right there adjacent to that. So, I mean, I assume that would have told her this person yeah, just could, left. Because they said it was a screeching loud sound, right? Isn't that what well, we can listen to it ourselves? Yeah. Well, I believe so, you. I so believe here, you. Here's, here's the question then. But then still now, something just happened and someone just zoomed away. And you make no effort to do anything until the next morning at at, 11, at noon. We'll call it noon just to be easy, right? How do you how do you how do these actions stack up against this idea? I was frozen in shock phase and couldn't do anything. Well, you're 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 you're, ju you're making a judgment call on the fear, what she's fearing, but uh, they or, were or that she's fearing. No, hey, I'm they were saying. frozen, but supposedly they were texting during the whole thing. Correct. She was fearful enough to lock her door, but she wasn't fearful enough to sit there and text Bethany about. Now how do we know for sure she was texting Bethany and not just that they were the two of them were texting? Where does that I info come that. from? I okay. huh? seen that. <laughs> we don't know that they were texting I each other. That. All we do know, all we do know is that the phones of both Bethany and Dylan were used to establish the timeline. Yeah. Okay. So, that's so now how do we know that? that? Each other, that's, that, 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 that is. That, that, that's written. That is, is that, is that said? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Let me see. Hey, but go up. Go downloads up. Downloads of their phones, along with with uh, statements and downloads of their phones, camera footage. Yeah, read Here it. Here we go. Here we go. Combination of DM statements to law enforcement, reviews of forensic downloads of records from BF and DM's phone, and video of a suspect video as described below leads investigators to believe the homicides occurred between four and four twenty-five a.m. Yeah, object, hold it right, right there, Jeff. Where you have that highlighted, it says DM phone and video of a suspect video and described below leads investigator. So there's a video there. People yeah. have put vehicle in that place where it says video. They've wiped it out. But this is, I could be wrong, okay? I'm it's, sure there's, I, I assume they're referring to the light bulb camera. Video, video of a suspect video. So, did one of them take a video of him speeding away? Maybe that's the exculpatory evidence. Well, I'm, I'm trying to forensics downloads and records from their phones and video of a suspect video is described below. So, they're going to tell you what the suspect vehicle is below. And I, I that's how they established the, the time of the crime. It's a conclusion of, based on all three, the video, the phone records, and statements made by Dylan. They then right. established from that data via this time period. Now, yeah, I see two commas over, separating. Right. Bethany Go down Dylan was was phone, comma, like and that. video of a suspect video. The whole thing was written like shit, if you ask me. They didn't do any uh, grammar corrections or anything like that. They even whited out the little spots of somebody else's PCA. And hand wrote the, the initials of the people. It's crap. Right. But that just me. I mean, you know. I mean, maybe it's taken from previous documents and they don't want to like alter it so that in court it looks like, wait a minute, it says this in the first document, in the original, and now it's different in this one. So, you know, maybe it's like when you put SIC in parentheses over where somebody is misspelled or something, you know. No bullshit. It's exactly what I said, Jeff. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, oh, not bending, right. I'm not bending on my fucking statement, damn it. And I know you were on the group chat, the text chat with Beth Bethany and Dylan too. So that's how you. Yes, know exactly. Well. They, were, they were fucking texting me. It was a group text. Yeah. Blowing your phone up. <laughs> I was, I was, I was flirting with Dylan the whole time. Well, I talk with Brian Coburg almost every other day. So you guys, uh, you you guys got no weight, okay? <laughs> I'm loving this, guys. I'm loving it, man. 
Oh my God! I've never thought I never you, thought that I would have you two on panel. Can but you imagine should. if someone takes that, cuts just those few words out, and puts that out there as a clip from what I said, <laughs> no, with no context around it? That no, you know, right, right. You know what's going to be out and about? Don't go to Twelve Gauge Page. He's a pervert. He showed a picture <laughs> of a penis for twice, for a three times. Of a yes, call the sack. <laughs> It was peanut hunting for whatever reason. Like I can't, I can't even say cul-de-sac anymore without feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> Thanks, Twelve Gate. <laughs> so a video. Of, so this we PCA brought up people. a lot of interesting things tonight. We're going on four hours. I think I'm done for the night. I don't know about you guys, but oh, yeah. we can definitely do this again some other time if you are a game. Um, I'd like to do some more research on that Mizzou case. And, you know, kind of dig deep into that if we could. You know what I would like to do? I'd like to get, listen, get video streams set up where Jeff and I are both in opposite locations with shock collars on. And you have the devices, <laughs> you have the devices <laughs> to engage the shock. I got one here I could use. Then, uh, yeah, we can just rig we it up. start going through facts to see which facts are accurate and which aren't, okay? <laughs> Hey, you know what I'd like to do? Jeff and I tried to do this the other day, but I think it would be more beneficial if, it was you two doing it, and I was the referee. You know, is one person's pro and one one person's one the defense and one the prosecutor. And you know, I could be the the mediator, I guess. You could be a judge. You're you're going to be your honorable twelve gauge. You're yes. going to be judge us. Hey, I'm going to be the judge to make sure that no shady shit is being done behind closed doors or anything. So, are you going to be twelve twelve? Yeah, twelve. <laughs> 12 gauge gauge, you know, something. gauge gauge. Yeah. No, there's no so, sense. So I'd like for you guys to, you know, think about that. If you'd like to do that, I'd, I'd love to do that debate thing a little bit. Maybe do the whole panel, like, you know, the whole time where we're actually breaking down what we talked about tonight. And the next time maybe debate it where we got information mm -hmm. rather than speculation where we can focus on the evidence. Well, we're, all, we're we're kind of somewhat already doing it in a way. Um, well, yeah, I think, but it, I think I mean, a lot of you should do it without the evidence in front of you, where you can present it in a at the time rather than to have to stop and go look at the evidence because they're yeah. not they're not going to be able to do that. So, I mean, well, yeah, in a way, they are actually more so than you think. Everything they're going to go over for that day day study and practice before they ever get in that courtroom. Oh. It's all scripts. They they got it all scripted out, and uh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how these trial lawyers prepare for trial and how the trials are executed. Okay, my motive was I wanted to see y'all go back and forth, and I wanted to fucking be the referee. I want to do it with the shock <laughs> collars. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the, the shock, shock collar. collar. We could probably hey, sell tickets for that. That's shit. What, hey, if that's what you're into, man, then you know whatever. There you go. <laughs> No, I, I think you know. I think you probably draw viewers in like crazy. Subscribers, yeah, that would be yeah. badass, right? Jeff H versus Sergeant Friday, shot caller. <laughs> come one, come on. Six dollars for the video yeah. screen. Yeah. We're gonna you turn get it free. all the way up to level seven. Yeah. If you get a free membership. Yeah. Hey, maybe we can get in with the with the grub truck guy and you know sell tickets over there too. Yeah, you <laughs> probably don't need them. I'm hey sure Jeff, on that topic, I was watching your grub truck video again today. I don't know why I watched your Linda Lane and your grub truck one, the one to yeah. two on Linda Lane. I noticed a screaming sound <laughs> at the very beginning of one o'clock. It was probably one o'clock and some change. On Linda Lane? Yes. I noticed some screaming. Not saying that that came from King Road, but I noticed it weren't me. <laughs> <laughs> as harsh would say it, hey, it wasn't me hey it sounded like the monsters having sex that's what it sounded like if they were yelling oh god oh god it was just a religious service don't worry about it <laughs> that's common guys, hey, guys praise, the lord. Lord. praise the lord <laughs> hey i've loved this man i mean you know you guys you guys bring some comical scenarios and attribute to it and to intellect more than anything I'm glad and 12, you, uh, 
Sergeant, I, I appreciate you. You know, I know at first you didn't want to have anything to do with the conversation with me, but I appreciate you hanging in there and, and sticking it out. Cause I mean, I, you know, I mean, I'm of one, I can talk with anybody, somebody that I despise. I can talk with because right, but you, God, you, God you made you, you, God made me. And, and, uh, you know, he's to me my, personally, you're of great value to God. You're of great value to me. And it doesn't matter what you think. So, you know, yeah, that's just me. Uh -huh. Well, let me close it out. You guys have it in a nutshell. He, he, he's peace on earth and everything. Hey, you guys stick around. I want to, I want to ask you something off camera. Um, just so it's not viewed as conspiracy or anything. Those of you that are watching it, it just has to do with some other planning that I would like to plan with these two gentlemen. You're not going to pull that cul-de-sac up again, are you? Oh, no. White <laughs> okay. Lion, PKC. Like. White yeah. Lion, PKC. Um, Sabrina. And if I'm missing anybody else, thank you so much for being in chat. I hope I see y'all again sometime when we do a live. And I appreciate all your commentating, all your um, open-mindedness. Thank you so much for hanging with us for four hours if you've been here the whole time. Um, hope to see y'all again soon. Y'all take care. Y'all want to say anything before I click in? Uh, this, no, was, this, was, this was great. Thanks, everybody, for uh, for listening and all your great comments and stuff. Sarge? Yeah, ditto. No joke? No, no, <laughs> no I, I didn't have any joke ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk. All righty, and cut. <laughs> All right. Where'd he go? Oh, did he leave? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I don't think he understood you wanted him to stay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'll talk to him later on, I guess. Um I'm tired. You. That, that took a lot out of me. <laughs> thanks for coming up, Jeff. Um, it's only eleven though, man. And oh there he is. There he is. Hey Sarge, I'm glad you came back, man. I, I'm I'm really thankful you guys were on here tonight. I'm not bullshit. I wasn't just playing for the camera. Damn, am I still streaming?